I believe we're going. Check it real quick. This you this uh yeah, live stream up. stuff. Well, it's good. I have no signal here, so I can't play with my phone the whole time I'm here. <laughs> Get money. That way you can Google what I say and see if I'm lying or not. Definitely lying. You made that up. You still got it on here, right? Yeah. Okay. I like the um, helmet on the right. I made my buddy watch Pineapple Express for the first time today, uh -huh. and he had never seen it, and I, he laughed at the whole thing. Dude, Pineapple Express is one of the my generation's Porkies. You well, know I, I mean? feel, well, I'm just, me and the wife just watched Porkies the other night. Yeah. We were like, I was like, you ever seen Porkies? She goes, yeah, when I was like 15. And I was like, I think I was like 17 the last time I seen it. We should watch it again. Dude, yeah, I, I saw it po popped up on like Netflix or Amazon. Yeah, so I like one of them. Yeah, I think it was Amazon. <laughs> yeah, so I want to check it out. I haven't seen it forever. Well, I think Pineapple Express is one of his underrated movies. And then we watched um, Observe and Report. Mm -hmm. the, like, because that came out the same time Paul Blart did. So like everybody goes, oh, that's that Paul Blart movie. He's like, no, this is different, totally yeah. different. <laughs> that, that whole era from, like, super bad, like that, you know, that, that group that James Franco oh, yeah. and all them, like, all the movies they did in that, yeah. like, what would you say, like, 06 to, oh, like, yeah. 12? Oh, yeah, definitely. All of them are classics, yeah. man. Fucking, even, like, I Love You, Man. You remember that one? Well, that's, yeah, I Love You, Man, and there's that one, Role Models. Have you ever seen Role yeah, Models? Role yeah. Models is great, and it's just, like, it's, like, stuff you can't really let a little kid watch, but it's, like, but I think it's kind of, it reminds us of when we were kids, like, yeah. the stupid stuff we did, and I think it just came, what it came at the right time when we were all, like, in our 30s and getting mm -hmm. late 20s, and it was like, oh, yeah, that's what it was like when I was in high school. I know? don't think there was, like, that really funny kind of quirky kind of thing for, like, the early 90s, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, I mean, I think American Pie was probably, like, the first yeah. one of those. Well, I think a lot of the 90s stuff, they started, every, that's when everything like started. National Lampoon well, shit That's, like, something. when everything started preaching to us. Oh, yeah. So it was all, like, stuff like, uh, you know, you'd be like, this group in Seattle, you know, and it was, like, so far away from the, what everybody else in the U.S., how their lives were, you mm -hmm. know, and it was just, like, but that's how, well, that's why all those movies were like that. It was, like, all these angsty people from Seattle and L.A. and mm -hmm. all other stuff, and then the rest of us are, like, oh, I live in small town, middle of nowhere. Yeah, I have no yeah. idea what you're talking about, so. Yeah, it's been a crazy one, man. So, are we going? Everything's. Seems like. Are it. we still going? <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like everything's cool. Uh, just, like, remember. Not to get too far away from the mic. Yeah, you just, I just keep it like this. That That's way fine. I fl flow around I with it. But it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. You can mess around with it, get it comfortable, wherever. Yeah, as long as you can hear me. It'll like be a good. fist away. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> just put We're it trying mouth. to make it comfortable. We need a I'm, green room I'm now. Try, I'm trying to do anything perverted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <"Arr." laughs> It's okay. I know you put a hot dog flake shape thing in front of you. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't been You know what kind of foods so. look like dicks? Oh, All the know, best kind. You know what's funny is in my memory in Facebook the other day, uh, there's this video. We were in Oregon in a, one of those restaurants that Guy Fieri had been to. Yeah. So they were known for this big hot dog. It's like this big. And there was a picture of my wife just like this with it. And so I just shared the memory. And one of our friends, like, photoshops everything. And I, all right, as soon as I posted, he goes, oh, this won't get photoshopped at all. <laughs> and it was like, she's like, I can't believe you posted that. And I was like, I just shared it. I didn't post it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so, just crazy. Yeah. So you've been traveling, huh? Oh, yeah. I've been uh, – I haven't been back to Florida since January. And you were here in December last year, almost about the same yeah, time. Yeah, so I probably left here going home for Christmas – Mm -hmm. And then toward the end of January, I went back on the road and headed out to California and stuff. So and that's the plan now because I'm shooting here this week, shoot around Austin next week, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to be in Florida for Christmas Eve mm -hmm. uh, to meet the wife there, ride mountain bikes, all that stuff. Yeah. And then I will get bored after about five days of sitting on the couch and go – all right, time to get back on the road again. Yeah, time to go play. <laughs> and you're you're around Jacksonville? Yeah, St. Augustine, Augustine. But on right. like the 13 side or by the river, like mm -hmm. where everybody goes rides, not actually on the actual St. Augustine on the beach yeah, or anything. Yeah, yeah. So that's all good. Yeah. Yep, definitely. But yeah, man, we uh, I was listening to the the podcast we did last time today just so that I would try <laughs> to navigate around not talking about the same shit we talked about last yeah. time, but I think a lot of things we talked about last year are still relevant. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? And like You've been doing a lot of YouTube videos so yeah. far. It's been coming out. and Yeah, I just started I about know. a month ago. I didn't, yeah, I didn't <laughs> yeah. even know. And I'm like, fuck, man, I watched, uh, I think, all of them. And um, I love that behind-the-scenes thing, especially, yeah. like, for someone like you that's shooting, like, the automotive custom world. Yeah. Uh, that, that shows a lot more to me than, 
you know, just another Peter McKinnon shooting, yep. you know, the hand thing and shit like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> or turn the coffee. Or yeah, like buy my coffee beans. <laughs> exactly. So, and this year for me, like I said, it's uh, it's funny because I think I text you when you came here and did the podcast last year. We were in the pro- uh, we were in the process of building this. We were almost done. Yep, we were downstairs, and yep. um, I was just about to buy my first full frame camera but i hadn't quite yep. figured out if i was gonna be yeah, a you're Canon picking guy. my brain a little bit yeah. and i was and i basically it's like ford versus chevy you know exactly. i mean it's you can't go wrong but you just the hard part is you have to pick because you start buying lenses mm-hmm. and it's like you really need to stay with that once you go along because you wind up with such an investment in lenses and that's yeah. where the quality is and you don't really uh you can't go all right unless you get somebody to buy your stuff and that's the only way you can get out of it yeah. but, it's, but everything's so good now and there are plenty of options. Like, I shoot Fuji all the time. Mm-hmm. That's all I shoot. I shoot their medium format for all my big stuff. And, in fact, that's all I shoot now because I just bought their new 102-megapixel camera. Damn. So my 56-megapixel camera is now my backup. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, so some of my clients are not super stoked about it because, like, sh- car show coverage, they're like, yeah. they don't need a 102-megapixel. Yeah, but, I mean, that. The, w- what I noticed once I started having things printed, which those two are yep. from other photographers, uh, once I had it printed, like you start to realize, okay, you you know, I have a full frame camera, but how big yeah. can I get it printed? Well, the cool thing is too is once you're shooting the full frame, is like you can bail yourself out if you mess up a little bit more too. Mm-hmm. And there's so much dynamic range in the new stuff. Yeah. So if like you underexpose a little bit or overexpose a little bit, and, and really I think you're a little bit better to underexpose because when you yeah. bump it up, you still have a lot of contrast. Exactly. And uh, yeah. but that's the good thing with it is it bails you out. And I've actually found myself because I'm known for using lighting and everything when with the new camera, there's so much resolution. The mm-hmm. lenses are so good. I, my stuff's leaning more toward almost natural light with just a little bit of flash in it Yeah. because that camera shoots natural lights better than anything I've ever shot in my life. Mm. And it's just, it looks beautiful. It's like butter. I mean, it's just yeah. like, it's just, that, I was going to say that because yeah. like, you know, I've always been a fan of photography, yeah. but after this year of like really diving in and trying to learn a lot of different techniques and, and, uh, and and whatnot in the photography spectrum, I look at your photos now, photos now with a different like, man, like how did you get that? How did how does your lights like curve like go over the the body lines and not become like a, a flashpoint? Well, that's you know that's years of screwing up. <laughs> that's what that is. <laughs> that's like I've lit stuff for over twenty years. You know, I mean, I started out using we'd go buy big reflectors from yeah. uh, Lowe's. I think we talked about that last time and bounce light off of stuff. So a lot of it. But the thing, like, if you're going to use a light, uh, I always liken to people is think about when you. Um, yeah. Oh, that's the one I was talking about. It's like the lights just. Oh, is that the Cadillac one? Yeah. Yeah, that one's actually light painted at okay. the guy's shop with a 30 second exposure. Yeah, I was so, gonna say. I, I, and I took that all like you can combine those exposures pretty good, but that is actually all yeah. one exposure on that, that one, dude. And it's like that's a lot of it's just luck, well, <laughs> and it's heavy you know, metallic, so I mean it's yeah. The thing about it though, it's like you know, for for a lot of people that might just swap swipe past it, it's like yeah. as somebody that knows, like fuck, man, like to get the lighting in the right spot to even have something good to start with. Well, what you'll figure out too, and a lot of it is a lot of people want to jump directly to lights, and I always tell people it's best to work on natural light. And work on your horizon lines and all that other stuff because then when you go to set up your lights, you think mm-hmm. about it. Because when you shoot a car or a bike, you don't normally let the sun just blast the side of it. You kind of off angle a little yeah. bit, let it catch the flake. Do the exact same thing with the lights. And that's 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 the one main recommendation if somebody wants to light stuff that I recommend is like look at it like you would light it with the sun. Yeah. yeah. Like when you walk around a bike, you can or you see a flake tank you've done, you can see the way it turns mm-hmm. and what looks the best. Well, it's the same way with throwing light at it. But the, the hardest thing not to do is over light stuff because they're so powerful now. And you're like crank it up to 10 and fire it at it. And it's like, oh, it looks like crap. And it's like, yeah, but if you just yeah. shot it at like three, yeah, it'd yeah. have been like a natural light, I, you know? I've got a couple lights, but they're kind of like more entry, entry level ones. Like, because yeah. I didn't really know if I was going to even like going down that path. Yeah. I think more of the stuff that I've done this year has just kind of been more of a, like a, just a recap of what took place this weekend yep. kind of photography. And, as I start getting into trying to get into more understanding what light will do to the shit, yep. it's, uh, it, dude, it, it's still, oh. like, I have photos I'm proud of, but to be, like, where, like, I feel like I'm proud of because I accidentally got a good shot. Yep. To feel like I can do that every time I walk out with a camera, I feel like I got years and years Well, that's the do. thing is you need to have everything in your bag. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. you know, so like no matter what the circumstances get thrown at you, you can still take a decent picture if that's what you want to do. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and it's easy. It's, it's like everything else in life. It's easy to do the easy stuff. It's like being stuck in a studio or shooting with a white background or shooting, you know, next to an old building and light painting it. And it's like, if it's the same thing every week, then it gets easy. So you need to like push yourself to try new stuff. So I think you should try to light stuff that way. You should try and shoot with natural light. You should try and do, I mean. What do you light painting with like a? I use a one kind of like that one, but uh, it's from Westcott, uh, okay. their ice light. And it's so beat up. Like it has barn doors built on it and stuff yeah. like that. And my I buddy. My barn doors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My buddy Nick uh, is good friend. He's the guy I buy all my camera stuff from. And in fact, he was at the camera store in Nashville I always dealt with. And they yeah. went out of business. So I deal with Roberts in uh, Indianapolis now for all my stuff. But he was one of those companies. He's trying to get them to give me a new one because. Uh, mm. My 10-year-old ice line <laughs> looks like it's been run over by a car a few times. But that's also part of the problem of living in a van is sometimes stuff gets stuck yeah, on gets top of around. it. So. Well, you know, like, you've been in, in the photography space for so long compared to, like, me. Yeah. Um, and when I started looking at the products and, like, I've, I've, I don't know if we – I don't think we talked about this in the last one, but because YouTube has gotten to where it's at now, it's yep. where – and so many people are getting into the, the video space and the photography space um, – you see these companies making products that are decent, but yep. at a super cheap price. So, yep. like, you know, you got the the company Godox, which is that light yep. and, and my flashes or my flash that I have, and it's like not professional, yep, but pretty damn close. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's the thing is, is a lot of guys that light paint and stuff are just really good at Photoshop yeah. because then you you don't have to worry about yeah. seeing the light or anything like that. And I try to do it all in one shot because I don't want to sit at a computer for an hour. I mean, I have the skill to do it, yeah. but I'd much rather get it pretty close and then yeah, just have to yeah. do a little bit of stuff. And uh, maybe it's just me being lazy. But <laughs> I've been editing on the uh, iPad for the longest because it yep. felt like that had the closest color. Because yep. when I first started editing on that computer, I would edit it and be like, fuck, this looks good. And then I would export it and it'd be yellow. Yeah. And so then I was like, fuck, now I got to get a calibrated monitor. Yeah. So that's that. And then yep. another guy, like... I have no shame. Like, if someone says, hey, man, I'll teach you. I'm doing photography classes for 100 bucks." I'm like, yep. sign me up. Yep. Like, I'll walk. I mean, you said it in the last podcast. I might not walk away with anything but one little trick that yep. changes the course of my, you know, progression. Yep. And um, getting the Wacom tablet, too, to be able to work on is something that. Uh, yeah, I actually had to go to their computer because I wasn't, my hand-eye coordination wasn't good enough to do the. All right, my hand's down here, and my what I'm doing's up here. Yeah, so that's the, so uh, it's like that's I, the screen. One. Yeah. Oh, that's what I've got. Yeah, but I've yeah. got the, the one portable that has one. the computer. Yeah, into, the computer yeah. built into it because I can't have one that big in the Sprinter van. <laughs> so, but you know, you gotta give and take. I just you know because at the same time you know we're we're finally trying to I'm trying to be ready to start producing some type of video vlog type content yep. by January 1st yep. and uh, which I'm still kind of running out of time I've only technically made one video that's still I'm proud of it but I'm not proud of it like I'm I made it you know oh. what I mean I'm like well, okay I just I had one where I just threw it up because I needed something yeah and it immediately I mean it's nothing it's like 2,000 views on it but, but it was just like so I made one I really love and it's got a gasser shooting flames it's like the yeah. one I just put up and yeah. it's like 250 views and I'm like I was like why well, won't this one take off this is the best one I've done today yeah. and like nobody wants to watch it <laughs> well I like that one that's when you sent me yeah. and uh you know watching like I said being being able to see behind the camera and yeah. see how it kind of came to light that shit's fun to me it's yeah. like when you ever watch those uh, you don't have to answer it, but I have huh. um it's like when you see some of these dudes that just walk around the streets at night and do nighttime photography oh yeah yeah yep. and you'll just see them clicking and then yep. they're like They'll show the phone like, oh shit! Like that yeah. came out of that. Like yeah. that's dope, you know. Yeah. And well, that's, I like doing that stuff because it's all long exposure. And I, I used to go to when I'd go to LST. Mm -hmm. I kind of started it like after hours and everybody went home. Whatever trucks were there, I'd light paint them out on the show field. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, people started seeing it. Now, like every show, it feels like everybody goes to the show and does that. Now it's like yeah. SEMA, they do it, and all this other mm -hmm. stuff. And it's, but it's just the tech. Like you said, the technology's got so good. You can walk around. I mean, that wand there weighs nothing. Yeah. You know, so all you need is a tripod, a camera, and a wand. Yeah, you, you know, can, and they have like a little sling too that you can yep. grab for it and just throw it over your shoulder yep. if you need it. Yeah, everybody looks at mine because it has the um, barn doors on it, and then I've got gaffer's tape all over it, so then you can't see out. So if I actually turn it to an angle, it still kind of blocks the light. So, so I noticed when using that thing, whenever I would shoot helmets, yep. it creates a better, it creates like a linear line yep. on the reflection, which I can, I'm, I'm, I like it more. It actually yeah, yeah. adds a little bit of a. Uh, a, a touch to it that I like, but then the 
the other light that I have out there that I'm trying to yeah. pop well, that's that That's the flake. hard parts you run into because what you should probably do is shoot as two exposures, mm-hmm. shoot the front of the helmet, shoot the side of the helmet, mm-hmm. and then just do like a blend layer and switch to lighten. So it just brings I haven't both learned together. how to do that yet. To, that's super simple. I can show you. <laughs> yeah. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. so, but that's what I'm saying is sometimes that's one of those things of over lighting. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I got three lights up and I'm doing this. But what you want to do is you want to get one and get it to where you're like, that looks pretty good. Yeah. And then you go over and just start bringing in a little bit of light on the other corner, like cross lighting it. Mm-hmm. And then you just get a little bit of kiss of that light. And then you're like, oh, that's because that gives you a little bit of artsy look, but still pops, pops your flame. So you're doing that, that with stuff. the tripod and leaving the tripod and everything stationary. Yeah. That yeah. way you're not. Yeah. Lighting. Yeah. Because a lot of the stuff I'm doing with strobes now, I shoot it just like I do light painting where everything's locked down and you do your passes. And then if you have to take the wheel from one exposure and put it on this one because you missed it on a pass, it's the same thing with that. So mm-hmm. it's. But it's still pretty run and gun. I do it way faster than a lot of people do because, like, when we were good guys, I shot 11 cars in, like, four days, you know, and it was like we're fighting, and we got to wait till the show's over. Yeah. And then sunset's at 530, Mm -hmm. and so we're just – and I had – Damon and Steven from Good Guys were picked two of my spots for yeah. me, so I gave them a hard time. They didn't look good, but they're actually pretty good spots. But it was, <laughs> and then, but it's just one of those ones where like sometimes beggars can't be choosers. But like the day before that, there's a old. Uh, if you ever go into Scottsdale, well, it's, this is in Mesa. I was shooting at, at Switch, the air suspension company. Yeah. And uh, there's an old hotel there called the Buckhorn, mm-hmm. and it used to be like this crazy, um, like salt bath thing people would go and like all the baseball players would stay there when they go to spring training mm. and it's got it's still got this massive neon sign and everything oh, yeah. i can't post any of the pictures because i shot it for ma- it's magazine stuff and uh but it was one of those ones that like you don't want to be at that location after it gets dark but up until the well, it's sunset it's on the building sunset. perfect and everything yeah, yeah and i was supposed to shoot a hot rod there and they were running late and they're like oh we'll be there at like 10 i'm like yeah i'm not shooting here at 10 o'clock at night because i already had like some guy in a wheelchair yelling at me and preaching at me and stuff and <laughs> It was one of those crazy. Yeah, those. I, same thing. Like, uh, I don't know. I started following certain pages that, that document Dallas. Yeah, yeah. The city. Yep. And now I don't like walk. I don't, I'm scared to walk around town. Are we talking like Texas Latino media yeah, or whatever? Not the Latino one, but there's <laughs> Dallas, Texas media. And it's literally just reposting like, you know, like we had like a slew of rappers getting shot here for like Oh, a yeah, week. yeah. That was crazy. I, I was seeing that. I was like, yeah. I was like, wait, wait. That was probably a bunch of beef in between all of them, though. There yeah. was one that like they, the dude chased him down the street. Yeah, like, that one was on crazy. Like foot. wrecked his car and he got out of his car and then the guy started chasing him. But yeah. it was, yeah. There was a bunch of shootings in Deep Ellum, you know, months ago, too. Yeah. Uh, like just bad drug deals and shit. Well, it's crazy with Deep Ellum because Deep Ellum used to be bad. And then it got good and was the hip place. And then it kind of like started. Nah. So we have like the way <laughs> it's the, always been seedy. What yeah, happened, it's always been seedy, but what it got hipster was, seedy for a while. Well, that's what I'm like, saying. So then all these fucking like <laughs> basic hipster people started coming in, yeah. but it still stayed seedy. That's what's funny with Detroit. Like, so I went up there. Um, I work for an ad agency and one of the guys there, he um, teaches at the Art Institute there, mm-hmm. which is in the old GM building, which is this iconic building like they used to you know, design cars and stuff. They're like the, yeah. cat, the 60s caddy and stuff. So I was like, I just went to see the building. But when we were leaving, we stopped for dinner in like this old jazz club. It was like an old speakeasy back in the day. Mm-hmm. And they were, he was just showing me stuff about how hipsters have come in. And because I was like, he was like, you look at this like three years ago and like mm-hmm. you, we would not be here this late at yeah. night three years ago. And then already like people start buying and you get that, that first few people that weasel their way in you know, and it was, uh, you know. Those are then influencers. Then it makes yeah. it makes yeah. it okay to be out past. Well, that uh, was like with the one comedian from o'clock. Detroit said that one time. He goes, I knew Detroit was coming back when I looked out one day in the hood I lived in and saw a white lady running down the street, and she wasn't being chased. <laughs> like, she was just exercising. <laughs> Wasn't that Cat or was It that might Cat, have been Cat Williams. That was Cat yeah. Williams, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I. But Detroit's I, beautiful. I don't care what anybody I, says. I, I I've was never been there. I was close to being there. I, I went yeah. right by it this year. Yeah. But. Um, well, that's what's funny. My wife has been was with me since March until Sunday. And um, we, she did, I think we got her almost 40 states and 50,000 miles since March. Damn. And there was a couple of times, like, we wound up being, like, if I'd have taken an exit and went three miles north, I'd have been in Michigan. Yeah. So I, I, I could have knocked Michigan off. Then we were in New Hampshire, and we went into Maine. And it's like, you can go three miles and be in Vermont. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, so there's a bunch of states I could have just, but she's one of those ones. She's like, but I want to do something in that state or it doesn't count. And I'm like, sure, oh. yeah. All That's right, how well. I feel about riding through them because, like, yeah. you can you can say like I just nicked the corner of yeah. North Dakota. I'm like, did you really? Maybe you should just go in there and have a beer or something. Well, this or, is the first or, year because I always buy, I always wind up I stay at a lot of state parks because they're cheap. Yeah. Plus, 
the facilities are always great because you're either on a lake or they're on trails. And I mean, if you want to go for a run, try and stay in shape, yeah. you know, you're not in like park next to like cattle at an RV park. Yeah, you know? exactly. And uh, this is the first year that I haven't done Michigan at all in like five or six years because I have a line of the stickers that you have to buy to stay, mm. like the state passes sticker windows. And I was yeah. like, I didn't get one for 2020. And so it's the first year I haven't made Michigan in forever. I've actually done more traveling this year than I ever have in my life. And I, I swear, every time I'm on the road, I'm on one side of the state and you're on the other. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I'm like four hours behind you. Well, were you or, at Sturgis? Yeah. I went right through there. In fact, I got pulled over for speeding for 75. And Dude, because they lowered the speed limit right well, there. Well, no, they got me before they lowered the speed okay. limit. So I'm driving down the highway and I'm outside of, uh, what's the town to the west there that everybody stays in? Uh, spearfish spearfish yeah so i'm coming into spearfish and it's a 75 mile an hour zone and i got the crew set at 78 79 right there on the sprinter and i'm just like doo, 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 and i see a, a mustang in the center yeah and i was like man that cop car looks cool as a mustang it's all blacked out you know the 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 south dakota logos are all dark on it and stuff and i'm looking as i go by i never even hit the i never hit the brake because i'm like i'm four over <laughs> you know and all yeah. of a sudden i see his tail lights and his wheels turn and i'm like Ain't nobody around me. I said, I looked at my wife. I said, I think somebody's going. I think he's going to pull us over. She's like, How fast are you going? I was like, Like four over. And then he gets out behind me and rides beside me for a while, but I never hit the brakes. So like, if I would have slowed down, he probably would have never pulled me over. But he pulled me over, and he goes, Well, we got to slow you down because it's bike week up ahead, and like a lot of the motorcycle trailers are doing a sixty-five. So I was like, Well, you should probably pull them over then <laughs> for like going under the speed limit. But why go to Sturgis and ride on the interstate? Yeah, there's well, so much good back road. There between, is, you know, you know, but like as someone that goes all the time, and I'm all, always trying well, to take you need people, to get out of that traffic too. Sometimes if you're trying those, to get someplace. those back roads, yeah. you know, they're great. But like you can find you can find yourself spending half a day trying to yeah. get from, uh, you know, the Mount Rushmore back to Deadwood. Yeah. You know, because yeah, he only, just gave me a warning, though. So it was fine. But that's we were joking. That's actually literally the first time I've been pulled over in like a half a million miles. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm the same way, man. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm four. Like, if you're going to give me a four-over ticket, I'm just going to take it because yeah. that's that's worth the gamble. Yeah, well, I opinion. kept the – I have the uh, the warning the posted warning. on the ceiling in the Sprinter. <laughs> but he was super nice. It was funny, too, because he comes over the passenger side of the Sprinter, and uh, he goes, all right, I'll meet you back at the car. So I come out the side door. and No, I got out the front door and walked around and walked on the passenger side just like a normal person would do. So I go over and I get to the – side and get ready to open the Mustang's door and I look in he's not even there and he's standing at the back of the Sprinter watching traffic waiting for me to come out the driver's door and I was like <laughs> you might want to pay attention yeah. <laughs> I was like obviously I'm not going to do anything but I was like I could have stole this cop car because <laughs> it was running <laughs> I was like but uh it was he was a super nice guy and it was but he was just trying to get me to slow down because all the motorcycles and he did give me that warning they lowered the speed limit and so yeah I think that's the main reason he pulled me over is to keep me from actually getting a ticket so yeah we were that was a weird thing because I, I saw they lowered it and um because coming in it's like 70 75 yeah, yeah. something like yeah, that 75. and it goes down at 65 it's yep. like and dude 65 is like oh it was slow. painful it was painful it's like hit this shit over with and man. then everybody's doing the exact same speed because they're afraid and plus everybody's doing 65 so everybody's just clumped together yeah and like one person's doing 64 and one's doing 66 and it's like oh this is worse than just letting it be 75 <laughs> My son started playing soccer a couple of years ago, and he was still real young. And they would call it bunching up. Yeah, yeah. Because they'd all go after the ball, and yeah. it'd be like this pile of kids. Yeah. And everybody's just kicking at whatever. Yeah. They're, just, they're not even kicking the ball; they're just kicking each other. And they, yeah. <laughs> and they, they, the, the coaches and the referees are like, "Stop bunching up!" And that's what I think about all the time when you get that that group of cars where everybody's playing. Yeah. You know, car twister or Jenga yeah. or whatever the fuck, and it's like, God damn, just. If you're cool with going the speed limit, just get over. It yeah, and chill. I just I feel like you would think cars didn't come with cruise controls anymore. Yeah, because every I, but I think what is happening is a lot of people have the lane assist, and so when they get close to a car, they have it set to like four or five car lengths, so they just start to slow down, and it's mm. not them. So they have the cruise on, letting the car do a lot of the stuff. So like, you know, they'll pass you, and then they slow down like this, and it's like, well, it's because they're using lane assist. It's not because oh, they're that. an idiot. <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, cruise control. Man. Yeah, that shit is. Well, I the get, Sprinter runs great with the cruise on, but you still have to have momentum. Like coming over here is all rolly, coming the back way from Burn It, and it's just like I'm just trying to make the momentum, and then you got people like cutting me off, and I'm like I'm just trying to keep the momentum going. I was like I'll run eighty this whole road. I don't care. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you ended up picking her up in uh, March. Is that yeah? What you so said? I was um, so I was here, 
mm-hmm. in the first of March for the Good Guys show. Yeah. And I was sitting in the parking lot. It's pouring rain. 11 o'clock at night, they sent me a text and go, hey, the show's canceled. And I was like, oh. So I was like, well, I'm going to Phoenix to shoot the MBR cart, Squeegees. Uh, I had to shoot it for PPG. Mm-hmm. And um, so I went out there, and I was out there for a couple days, and she calls me, and she goes, hey, I think they're sending us home. And uh, so I was, she's like, where are you? I was like, Phoenix. She goes, I'll call you back in just a little bit. And she called me back like a half an hour later. Go, can you get me at the airport at 1130 tonight? And I'm like, sure. Yeah. And, then, and then we thought she'd just be there for a couple weeks. And because uh, we've never really – We've been married for 12 years, and we've never spent as much time together as we have this year. <laughs> and I was like, and everything's still okay. Yeah, yeah, everything's okay. still okay. She she got close to killing me toward the end there, but I'm it's pretty much me. So yeah. it's you know you just get a little short after a while, you know, and it's but it's also funny too is like I always feel like it's my space, mm-hmm. but when you've been in something since March and like it's still it's your space too, you know. It's like yeah. one thing if you're there for two weeks, you're like, yeah, that's his space. Who cares? You know, and it's like she wants. That's to what she would do before. She would just fly out and meet you and hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a certain so, area for a while. Yeah, she loves her job. She works for the state of Florida in the water management district, mm-hmm. and um, loves her boss and all that stuff. And then one of us has to have health insurance and four hundred one k and all other stuff. You know, because I don't know what I'm doing three weeks from now, and she's got a budget planned out for the next five years. Yeah, because her doctor in statistics, so she plays the statistics of what I've done the last five years and how the industry's going and stuff. So yeah. it's. Her brain works totally different than mine does. <laughs> yeah, so. the, the art is cursed, man. Like, it's, yeah. it's all about the, the the creation of things. And, yeah, I mean, I, I, I get that, man. It's I think of, you know, I'm, I'm creeping on 40 now, so I well, think Well, I'm creeping about, on 50. Yeah. So I'm 48 this year, and uh, so the next year will be my 49th, and I'm going to have 50. So it's that's one of those ones I'm like, ugh. But – 50 is the new 30, they say. <laughs> that's what all. That's what all the old 50 Who year said old, that? all the 50 year old all the 50 year old people. Yeah, I, I tell you what, 50 doesn't feel like 30. Yeah, like that's... right now, I have an I have an ankle that just hurts, mm-hmm. and it's like I can't tell you what I did. And it's I, I probably an I probably twisted it riding mountain bikes, yeah. but it's I got I, an ankle that hurts, a knee that hurts, my yeah. shoulders fucked up right now. <laughs> just had an MRI yesterday. Yeah, what, what was were you that like for? 24? <laughs> my, uh, I'm pretty sure I tore my rotator cuff. Oh, that's uh, not a fighting, fun one. so yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's he's an MMA star. Oh, now. I'll see. Wait till you see what you feel like when you're 50. <laughs> oh, I'm, hopefully it don't make it that long. So <laughs> <laughs> you say that. I'd say stuff like that when I was younger too, and I'm like, I like 70 looks pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, you just want to keep you know lengthening it yeah. out. Yeah. I actually, oh, to be honest, income. I think not. I'm having more fun at 48 than I did at 28. Probably. You know? I mean, you got a lot less, like, mental bullshit you're dealing yeah. with. You got more money. or you're well, Not even money, but you have more I don't more think steps, I have more like, money. But. Like, <laughs> like, you're more confident in where you're at in general yeah. in life. So yeah. you have less shit to worry about other than just doing things that you enjoy doing. Yep. You know? I, I, I like totally th- agree with that. I think that's yep. probably, like... I feel like 50 is probably your prime. Well, that's the thing, it's too, is when you're young in your 20s, you're just looking forward. You right. know, and then when you get to like forty eight, you're like, um, you start looking back. And yeah. You're like, oh yeah, look at all this stuff. Yeah. And then you regret like, oh, I should have done this, should have done that. You know. And yeah, you get to your uh, highest level of uh, of wisdom. Yeah. That you would probably achieve in your lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things I did this year is I took we took more selfies together. Like we have more pictures together from this year than we have. Like we didn't even have a photographer at a wedding. Mm. You know, like we don't yeah. have any pictures together. And it's like all the ones I have is her like jumping a mountain bike or, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So I don't really like being in pictures. Yeah, I don't either. There's a reason why I take them because if you take them, you don't, you can be yeah, behind the camera you can be behind and it, not man. in front uh, of it. So I realize that like I, I, I guess I'm pretty self conscious about, you know, certain parts of my, my physique. I'm not yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's like uh, being behind the camera is a lot more, it's different. But at the same time, like I've also, I'm, it's a fight to try to get to the point where you're confident just pulling out a camera and going and being that guy laying yeah, on yeah. the ground in front of a car yeah. show or bike show to get a shot. You know, yeah. it's like. Well, that's what's funny is my wife always laughs because I'm like, I'll look at stuff she wants to go do. And I'm like, I don't want to be in a crowd. She's like, you were just at a 10,000 car car show. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but I was working and I knew what I was doing. I like and I didn't have to go stand in line to do anything or, you know, stuff. And she signed us up for this big music festival in Iowa. 
-hmm. next year, which like Tyler Childers is at it and stuff like that. And she really wants to go. Yeah. Yeah, So she's super stoked about that. And I'm just like, yay. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it'll be fun. Don't get me wrong, because I love music and stuff. But it's just one of those ones. And it's, but we've been trying to do that. We've been trying to see what's really was crazy is we had made plans to see more music over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then COVID hit and a lot of the music stuff. And it's like, it's not the same. I mean, it's, you can't just, oh, here's someone's got a live stream. It's which Clutch had some cool ones this year. Like mm-hmm. if, you, if you follow the band Clutch at all, but like some of their live stuff from their basement was awesome. But it's still not the same as going to see Clutch at like a bike event yeah, in Maryland or something like that. You don't like feel that, it. You know? Yeah, you don't. Yeah. yeah. You don't feel in your chest or anything like right. that, you know, and it's just like, you don't, just don't feel the energy. Yeah, it doesn't have the power yeah. that it would. Well, I was like, I went and saw Whitey Morgan in Jacksonville. And there was 200 people there. And, I mean, he put on a great concert. But then I saw him someplace else had 2,000 people. And it was, like, totally night and day different, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like – but it was probably the same energy from him. But just the crowd energy going back from mm-hmm. the, yeah. the you know, the 200 to the 2,000. I mean, it it's depends. just – If you're, like, 200 in a small venue, that, yeah. that would probably rock hard. But, like, yeah. uh, if you're 200 in a 2,000-person venue yeah. – well, that, that 200 one, too, was Jacksonville. So I think a lot of people, it's like, there's so many scenesters. Mm. They're like, oh, it's the cool thing to go to go here. It's like, well, do you even like Whitey Morgan? Right. Or are you just there because that's what everybody in your scene's doing tonight? Yeah. You yeah. know, like a lot of them are just walking around. Like, they're not even paying attention to the stage. Like, you'll get your core people, like, down on the stage and yeah. singing along and stuff. And that's like, that was 30 or 40 people, the 200 crowd. And it seemed like everybody else was walking around with beers and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that's how it is. They call that loyal followers. Yeah. <laughs> very, Sometimes you get disappointed very, when you see bands, though, because I remember when I went and saw Reverend Horton Heat for the first time because, like, you'd listen to the albums. You're like, oh, this is going to be great. I, but then it's, like, exactly listening to the album. Like, the, all the notes are the same. Like, they don't play anything extra. It's just yep. the same thing with Horton Heat. You know, and it's like, I love Horton Heat on CD, but I'm like, I've seen them live five times, and it's like, eh, that's how I feel now, yeah. you know. I actually got into an argument about that. I'm in a band. Oh. So... Uh, I do lead guitar and vocals. Yeah, and a, like half of my band insists, dude, we have to play the exact same solos and the exact same thing and the exact same da 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 every single time. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, there's key parts that are like you know really catchy that people are gonna want to hear, like you know certain solos, like the yep. solos you sing along to, but like just the frivolous ones, they yeah. shouldn't be the same exact shit, and we yep. shouldn't do the same exact thing every time. Yeah, you know that's it's not that's not entertaining. Yep. it's just like they. <laughs> Especially know. when you get to that level, say like a Van Halen or somewhere, everybody has your albums. Yeah. I mean, they still mix up the guitar solos, you know? I mean, it's not exactly. the same guitar solo yeah. every night on the same songs, you know? And it just it shows a different level of like, I guess to me, it shows a different level of professionalism. Yeah. You know, you're, you, you, can, you can improvise. Yeah. You are a musician, you know, you're not just I look at the machine. same thing too as like... Even my photography, sometimes I feel like I'm doing the exact same thing, but with a different car, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and it's yeah. like, that's the hard thing I fight against. And is then you not get burned be- out, right? Well, I I don't really get burned out. I just get tired of myself. Yeah. And it's like, you're like, is this the best you can you do? You look at it and you're like, man. Well, some, just usually when I get, yeah, yeah, usually <laughs> when I get to that, I just, I don't want to look at it for like two weeks. Mm. Now I look at it two weeks later and I'm like, this is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I, there's been, actually, I've had way more photo shoots this year lately because of how great what I've gotten to shoot is that I think that's what makes my job easy is easier and not to get bland is because of how great craftsmen are. And it's sometimes like this year, I feel like I only shot like grade eight cars and super high end car winners Mm -hmm. and stuff. And usually throughout the year I'm shooting stuff, getting built and all this other stuff. And, you know, or I'm shooting a friend's car or something like that. And this year it just seemed like there was this over the top stuff I got to shoot. And then the people like it wasn't just like some guy with money going, oh yeah, I know, you know. It's like so that over the top stuff, people were stoked for their own vehicle. Yeah. And then usually people, you know, you get to the thing when a guy has a certain level of money where it's just, even if he's got two million dollars in a car, it's like, oh yeah, it is what it is. But this year, I just felt like everybody, like the guys who won the Riddler, it was uh, a father and two sons and their family in Minnesota built a car over like ten years in their <laughs> in their garage at their home shop that where they. They do restoration parts for Impalas, mm-hmm. and they built their first custom. And they don't want any customers. They don't. They just want to build a car to see if they could do it, you know. And it's just one of those ones that, you know, we kind of talked about it last time. But man, don't the, the amount of money it takes to build one of those cars now? Oh yeah, you know, and it's just like, we're, you know, to to have a really really nice, not even a Riddler car, but like yep. just a really nice car. You're hundreds of thousands. Well, that's of dollars. that's what it is. Is like we used to. 
you know, we, we were, I was talking, I've talked about with a lot of friends of mine this year is like a 30, 30 K was a good driver. Like mm -hmm. you could have a Camaro yeah. or you could have some odd sixties custom with some flake on it or something that like AC that. AC off, it's getting chilly. Yeah, yeah it's cold as hard. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you get that, you know, you get a, you get a, you could have a 30, $40,000 driver. You worked on yourself and you bagged it or did yeah. a cheap paint job on it, you know, and it's like, and you would, and you could actually maybe win a club's choice, a car show. Yeah. But now that car is a hundred, 150 grand, you know, cause I, we were just, I was looking at it the other day and it's like, I shot a truck that had an $85,000 chassis on it. <laughs> just, just a bare chassis for 85 K. Yeah. And you're like, how do you so he works at a shop now. Do you also do restoration there still? Yeah, we do a uh, put it on. You know the, the rotisserie, rotisserie, yep. the yep. roast. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like uh, I I grew up in that shit, and I never wanted to do that ever in oh, my yeah. life. Well, I hey, it sucks real bad. Well, that was my <laughs> first my first job where they let me when I worked for a NASCAR team was doing paint and body, and it mm -hmm. quickly made me realize I didn't want to be paint and body for the rest of my life. No, it yeah. sucks. Well, that's like when you see like. Mike Ring at the Ring Brothers, he still does all the finished body work on all those project vehicles they do, and that dude will stay till two, three in the morning, and then come back in at six those, in the morning. Those mundane like, jobs that are a part yeah. of be, doing body work or doing paint work is yeah. like you. It takes a special person to make that thing that we just dread doing, like polishing yeah. or yeah. something, and be like, like this is who I am. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's the, the thing is, best buffer I've in run world, into more people you know? this year that all they want to do is polish paint. And I'm like, what kind of crazy person just I'm wants to polish paint for a living? so good at that. <laughs> and I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Because I'll do it, and then people want me to do it well, again. Well, you have to have again. a certain level of OCD to be a paint polisher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you really do. I mean, because I remember Mike Dussold one time. I was standing there where a guy came in, and he wanted a black set of tens for a motorcycle. And Mike goes, well, I've got two different blacks do you want i'm just going to throw this on and drive it around or do you want to go to bike night and win shows a black paint job I mean, he's like they're both black paint jobs but one's quite a bit more money than the other one because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot and it's not that you actually spray the paint any different mm -hmm. you know it's, it's just, just a lot of prep work a little and more and prep and after work you yeah know? so man i don't know man i don't know what my fucking life's going to be in the next couple <laughs> of years i feel like i I've, I've spent at least a bike and a half on equipment this year, yep. photography, video shit. And, um, and it's like, I used to spend all my nights on laying in bed for bed, uh, on Facebook marketplace, looking for good deals on bikes. And yep. now I'm like fucking $1,200 for a lens. <laughs> yeah. God damn. What, well, what do they think they yeah, got? I'll get, I'll get you have a heart attack then. Cause, uh, my new camera, we've been talking about it since it came out last year. Mm -hmm. And, um, I probably have their their medium format, the 56 megapixel one. I probably have the one with more pictures on it than all of them. But Fuji has this deal where you can't see how many pictures the shutter has on it. Yeah. So um, all of a sudden, Amazon popped up with this 0% interest for four years. And my wife, Yeah, I know. If you had a city card. And uh, my wife was like, well, if you if, – because we were talking about doing it next year because I've been kind of saving up for it and stuff. But it's a $10,000 body. Damn. You know, and it's like – and all their lenses are – 2900 3200 bucks you know all medium format stuff and it's like Holy what's the difference but what's funny is i tried to talk her out of it because <laughs> yeah. i'm just like what no i don't know i guess i don't know what medium format stands for well it's more of just uh sensor size okay because so it's because it's in a full yeah frame? so it's probably two to three times bigger than your full frame oh, sensor okay. yeah okay. so it's but the cool thing i like about it is you once you get a bigger sensor you might like so my 56 megapixel camera and say a 56 megapixel f full frame it'll actually shoot better at low light because you're cramming less pixels on a bigger sensor mm -hmm. so i'm trying to i'm trying not to sound too much like a nerd <laughs> no, I, <laughs> but, I, I follow but it's yeah. one of those ones you know like so a lot of, like your phone you'll pull your phone like oh so you asked me the other day what i shot that video with is that osmo the pocket osmo. 2 well they bought hasselblad is a medium format company and dji actually got so popular they bought hasselblad mm -hmm. so they design all their sensors and stuff so i have their mavic 2 yep. pro yeah, and that's what the camera. Yeah, on that. so that's a medium format camera company, and that's who I used to actually shoot. And then Fuji used to actually make their digital lenses for them, but um, I think I just so lost come, train of it, thought. Is it, <laughs> is it because it just the price is so outrageous, or not outrageous, but it's just so high that most of like the camera world just like writes it off? Yeah, well, what? that too, and it's super slow. 
Like if you're doing any action photography, it doesn't focus fast. Like you can probably take your full flame sensor and be like, Brr! it's like somebody riding by and you're like, one of those pictures is going to be good. Yeah. And, but I do rolling shots with this camera and it's just like, but you're, I shoot full manual anyway. So I'm pretty much, I'm like, all right, I know where I want to be, where my background is. Like I'm paying attention to everything while I'm doing it. I'm just not saying and spraying it. But the 56 was super slow and took like one frame or two frames per second or something like that. But yeah. the new one's like going from a crop duster to the stealth bomber. And it shoots like 10, 12 frames per second. I mean, I've never shot it full yeah. deal. and But it's it's actually fast and it focuses always on point. Like I've never really used the autofocus on the other one. And then this one's just like boop, boop, boop. And it, it'll actually tell between each right and left eye. For like real? you can set it to what, what eye you want it to focus on. Because yeah, I know that they do the eye detection. Yeah, because like what's crazy with the medium format is so like F8 on your full frame is probably usually right the sweet spot of the lens. But F8 on the medium format, because of the size of the sensor, that focus has already fallen out. So a lot of the stuff that looks like F8 is more like F16, F13. Mm. So, But then I can bracket uh, the ISO on it instead of bracketing the shutter. So I can get the shutter where I want that so much light coming from natural light mm -hmm. and my lights that now I can bracket the IC ISO up to like five, 6,000 and it's still a usable picture. Yeah. You know, so it's, yeah, that's one thing I've been trying to learn too with uh, yeah. using uh, ISO and like trying yeah. to, well, what we should you know, do is I learned that, that from uh, a photography teacher that I'm just buddies with. And we were just standing around talking and he's like, yeah, I just, the new Nikon stuff's gotten so good, I just bracket ISO. And I, and I had my Fuji, and I was like, ding. I was like, why didn't I ever think of that? I was like, because basically ISO, it'll make it brighter or darker, but it just won't let, it won't let, it won't really change the quality of your light. You know, like what's coming in, like your shutter stays the same and the strobes stay the same, but it'll, it'll just make it a little bit brighter. And then until you start getting up to like five, 6,000 and yeah. getting above, it doesn't really affect the noise on it. And it also depends on what you're going to use it for. So, yeah. Yeah. Like last night, I shot that 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 helmet. Yeah. No lights. Yeah. Just like the, the I was in Deep Elm and they're you know waiting on our bike night and uh, so the sun was going behind the buildings and I was like, there's like no cars down there at this time. There's like a dead spot of Deep Elm between like four thirty five and like seven thirty, and yeah. then it picks back up for all the yep. bar scene and shit. And so I just like took that new helmet I got there, set it on the ground, and just like yeah, that picture to, looked cool. I liked it. Yeah. It was like. Just trying to, you know, yeah. I, I got like five or six shots before a car came, and yeah. and then I just, you know, real quick threw it in my phone, yep. uh, edited it on Lightroom, and yep. then you know, I shoot yeah, everything so, on the raw. So bracketing so. the ISO on that is you could get your shutter exactly where you want those backlights to be, uh -huh. you know, and then, um, you know, with as much light coming in, then you could just mess with the ISO a little bit up and down to get the rest of the image exactly where you want it. Yeah. Because, like, your full-frame sensor still, that camera still works really good at, you know, high ISOs and stuff. So Yeah, I, I ended up, I think I was asking you last year about that Canon EOS R mirrorless, and you yeah, said yeah. you had a buddy that had one. Yeah. And I actually bought a, a, a 6D Mark II, which yep. is a full-frame oh, as well. Oh, that's a great camera. Yeah. And then... Uh, I sold an FXR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How bad and, is that? You can sell a car and get a camera. <laughs> yeah. Like. So I sold this FXR that I was going to build, and uh, I went and bought a, the the mirror. It was right before the new R5 came out, yeah. and I was too impatient to wait a week. But they that, that camera ended up selling out. It's I did. Gonna, suddenly dawned on me what I was saying a while ago when yeah. I was talking about the crop duster to a stealth fighter. Yeah. It's like, so that camera at 10000 um basically performs as good as the thirty to $50,000 cameras that are out there. So that's the good leap that Fuji made is you can get a $10,000 camera. In fact, they just did a uh, update, a software update, where you can take a 400-megapixel image with it. And uh, <laughs> I haven't so, used it yet. So but you're saying there's cameras that are four. Oh, yeah, so like Hasselblad, Hasselblad in Phase 1, if you get into the 100 like megapixel. photography cameras? Yeah, yeah. Well, my Hasselblad that I used to shoot back in the day was thirty grand. Fuck. Yeah. But when I was doing commercial work, <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't even hire you if you didn't. But most people could rent. You'd rent one. You'd yeah, always yeah. rent that stuff. I got a buddy that rent that rents out. He does yep. like a lot of the – he has a red and a couple other yep. video cameras and stuff, yep. and then he'll rent out. Yeah, did you see that I video should. of uh, Jace Momoa with the red where they're on the ice motorcycles? Mm -hmm. And I was like, must be nice where you don't have to worry about it. You can just put a, put a red on the side of a – bike with uh yeah spikes on the wheels and slinging snow all over it and stuff like because you're worth millions <laughs> and they yeah. probably gave would you see the brass ones they gave him the other yeah, day they gave him holy yeah. cow yeah. well man like that video space is so much different because like as you as the photography thing for me is is like 
helping me be able to, you know, color grade a little bit yep. in a sense. I'm not there yet, but I understand it a little bit. As we start pushing into video, it's like I went and video with my actual Canon like two weekends ago when I went and shot Riley, and I was yep. like, holy shit, this stuff is shaky as fuck, man. Well, what's crazy is I shot a couple of my earlier videos are all shot on the, I, the 11 Pro, mm -hmm. and it's stabilized. And everybody's like, that video looks great. Like, I shot that Gathering at the Rock, the Hot Rod Show, shot on my iPhone. And then that's when I wound up buying the Osmo and the new GoPro 9. Mm -hmm. And I still haven't decided what I want for a full-time, you know, shooting car features, video. video camera. But, you know. So when we did our hood ride, I used the, the 9 on the 9's that. amazing. And, yeah. like, that was my first time, okay, I'm going to shoot all day long, and I'm going to figure this video shit out. Yeah. And I got one done. I put it out. Um and the video, I mean, the video, yeah, I, I realized, okay, I should have, you know, shot a little bit different here. I should have caught it this way. Yeah. You know, you, you think about that afterwards, like you're oh, saying. Yeah. But it was all smooth because they got that stabilization in yeah. there. So when I'm walking around, it does, it, it looks good. And it, it made me realize, oh, yeah, this isn't the way it works with, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, with the actual cameras. <laughs> yeah, because uh, my new 100 megapixel camera has video on it. And we were at a show in Iowa. And it has image stabilization built in the camera. And I was like, oh, I'll see how this works. I was like, it's not as good as my phone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. So they, and you know, like I have the, the Ronin S for like a gimbal for the big camera. But, dude, that's a fucking skill. Oh, yeah. That, like, it ain't like uh, like the little, like the gimbals that you yeah, get yeah. on your phone. Like, you know, getting the your camera might be not the most compatible one with this to work with the uh, auto detection thing. It's it's so much nerd shit. And then, like, yeah. The, just like getting the shots and the pans yep. and this, it's like fuck. Yeah, I have the one that came right before that that has all the, the. Yeah. Yeah, so I have it in the. Spray. I feel like that would be easier to use. Yeah, man. well, I like hard. it because in our industry, we shoot a lot of low stuff. Yeah. So it has the handle where you can have it low and walk with it. And um, I'm going to start using it more because I actually, the one camera I don't have, well, one camera I own that's not a Fuji because I'm waiting for the new, one of the new Fujis to come out is the G7X three mm -hmm. that they have which shoots uh 4k 60 and uh but it's like got a built-in lens it's like this big mm -hmm. so you can use it on that and take great video with it but mm. it's just one of those ones where it's like you look silly because it's got this big <laughs> yeah. piece but i mean i could put my 100 megapixel camera on it but it's yeah. just like your chances of bumping into stuff with that is a little bit easier than so you know one of the things that we're trying to do next year is like vlog the bike trips and the yep. events and all the things we go to similar to what you do yeah. um and so it's like okay well the gopro can be the gopro is going to be the thing i use just because of the you know i don't i don't have the skill to take that camera or my other camera put it on that i can't throw that in my bike it's too oh, yeah. big like i'm well, already too and you can't just throw it in a in a box and then pull it back out and it's still lined up like you have yeah, to you reset, reset everything, reset everything and, yeah, yeah. And then even my drone, like I have that that drone that I want to use more. But even that, dude, that's a that's a yeah. fucking skill in itself. Oh yeah, being able to fly drones and now I got to the, do it with riding at the same oh, time. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I had the the one good thing about it is you can it, that follow function on it's really good. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. And uh, I actually just ordered the new mini. That's the one I want now. Because yeah, because it actually showed up and burn it half an hour after I left today. Because <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be here on Friday. Oh. And uh, so the. Um, so it showed up today, but I got it because you don't have to get registered for that one. Mm -hmm. And really, I just want it for just intro stuff. I don't need it. I'm not yeah. shooting professional drone footage. I mean, if someone wants that, you should hire a drone guy. Yeah. You know? I think I, I might try to sell mine and yeah. see what I can get for it and then go get a Mini. Because well, even if you could sell it for then get you into the Mini, you know? Yeah. So. And the the thing is, like, the Mini is so much smaller that it'll fit in the saddlebag. It doesn't yep. take up as much Well, that's perfect for bikes, estate. you know? Yeah. I mean, it's... You know, that's, that's one of the good things about, that's one of the things like I have, like my pro is like in my, I have a bag of wires mm -hmm. <laughs> in the sprinter. So it's like, it's jammed in that cause the controller broke and it was going to cost me more than I paid for the thing originally to get a new controller for it or get the controller fixed. And I was, so I was like, it's for parts now. <laughs> so this one came out and I'm going to actually give it a serious go at flying it. Stuff, and, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, man, it's a, uh, the video space, like in, that's what I was telling you about that, that one guy that I, that you watched yesterday. It's like. We talked about this a little bit last time you were here, but getting into YouTube and, like, being normal, yep. like who I am and, and doing the normal shit that we do, I want to do that without playing this whole, like, pay to – or not pay to play, but uh, do what everybody else does on yeah. YouTube to, to, to be good yep. or to be uh, accepted. Yeah, and well, you just – the thing that's funny is 
we're actually in a, like a lot of people that watch us, they all want to be where we're at. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is do what you do and people will follow you for that, you know, yeah. cause I'm all like, like the first video I was like, it took me a, like a week to figure out, look at a video as a head. Cause you gotta, you gotta lay that story out. Yeah. So you gotta go from beginning to end. And usually I'm just like, I'm constructing a picture and that's the picture. And now it's like, all right, I got to start constructing something from this morning that lasts till this evening. So you got to film your whole day and then try and think while you're doing it, how you're going to lay the story out, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like truth of stranger and fiction. So like my buddy's giving me a hard time. It's like, you seem so stiff and it's like, this is not how you are. So like this video I did in Arizona for the pre-party Dino's, I started with emptying the sewer on the Sprinter van <laughs> because that's how my day started. Yeah. And I was like, who else gets to go to a car show and they have to dump their sewer before they go to a car show? <laughs> yeah, that's a... So before I came here, I dumped my sewer. I had to go, I went and checked into where I'm staying and dumped the sewer in it because the black tank was full. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's kind of the thing is like, I want to, I want to show that. I mean, obviously I can't say my favorite F word on it, but, um, <laughs> but at the same time, like I don't want to be... I just, just everything on YouTube, right? Right. Every, every bike guy does the same thing and I'm not trying to talk shit. I'm just saying like, yeah. they're all doing the same model and you know, they're all like following the same trends. As soon as Harley says something, everybody's got a review oh, on yeah. it, but nobody even has it. What's well, like all the ones where they make fun of people behind, have you, like there's a, a whole page that makes fun of influencers on Instagram. Influencers in the wild, baby. Yeah. Influencers in the wild. Yeah. And then there'll be pictures of like. Like the wife walked in, her husband just got a new Xbox, so he's filming unboxing it, and she's like, I don't even know who this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's also the like the the, the timing of that. Well, that's just how the culture is getting, you know. Yeah, it's the, like everybody the timing, films everything. The timing of that 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 whole influencer in the wild coming out, and now it's a joke, and I'm actively partaking in it when I see yeah. people oh, doing yeah. it in the street. I'm like, yep. Oh, look at them. And it's like, then here I am putting a fucking helmet in the middle of the street. <laughs> you know, like I get it. Like yeah. I it, it's like I I'm also kind of now, uh, you know, not insecure, but like, uh, I don't know what the word is. I'm just kind of like worried. Like, I don't want to be fucking. Well, that's the thing. It's like, well, I mean, when you're, I... you're making, you're making content, you're making art in your yeah. own eyes, man. Yeah. So it's like, you can't, there, there's nothing to be made fun of other than the fact that what you're doing looks goofy at times. Well, there's nothing worse than being at a show and trying to cut an intro in the middle of people. And it's like, yeah. I'm Talking like the people that the people that can do yeah. that. You got to give them props for that. Yeah, they're ballsy, dude. Because like I always, when you see mine, I'm always like standing behind the sprinter somewhere. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you know? so yeah, my first one I was like, "Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to the channel." <laughs> oh crap! Gotta do this again. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to see me talking. Yeah, I, that, that's a. Uh... And what's is funny is because I talked for three hours in the last podcast, and obviously I'm probably going to talk forever. <laughs> I obviously don't have a problem with talking. <laughs> yeah. But it's just like you just feel like an idiot. You yeah. know, but yeah. it's like, I feel like, so I grew up looking at car magazines and motorcycle magazines and all that stuff. And that got me totally what I'm into. And I, that's not there for the new generation, but I feel, cause everybody wants me to give photography pointers. Those websites already exist. Yeah. I want to show cars and cool stuff. I should almost just, I, I want to almost just call it, Hey, you want to see something cool? <laughs> you know, that's, <laughs> that's kind of how I feel about it. It's like, I don't want it to be about me. I'm like, look what this guy built. Yeah. Or, like, look at this paint job, you know? Because, I mean, there's not really a lot of that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff where people film stuff and show the car and they'll show the guy. But it's just like, eh, you know, it's like it, a lot of it's rough, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and that's my hard part is because my stills are at such a level that I want my video to be at the same level. So what I – like that video I did the other day, I took some of my stills from the photo shoot and put them into it to try and make up for how bad my video was. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like one of those kind of things. But just but to show people like, what I was doing, you it's know? one of those things, though, right? I mean, like, it, 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 it's it's weird that like talking to photographers, and then this is just an outsider's perspective. Yep. It's kind of like well, music. that's true. It is weird talking to photographers. Yeah, you guys are weird. <laughs> no, it's kind of like music in the same sense where it's like yeah. it's in the same category. You know, yep. being a videographer and being a photographer. So like me not knowing much would assume somebody who knows how to do photography yep. would know how to do videography, right? Right. Oh, yeah, you But would. that's like yep. assuming somebody who knows how to play guitar knows also yep. how to play piano. Yeah, well, you know what it should sound and look like. You know, for right. music, you know what you know what this should sound like. Or you, but you don't necessarily know how to make it sound like that. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's why I always laugh at other photographers. You know, like, they're like, hey, give me pointers. And I'm like, well, do you like how it looks? No, what do you not like about it? Yeah, well, you, this, you I'm like, well, you already in. know. You don't yeah. need me. You know why so you don't like it. When I edited that video that I did recently, yeah. like, I 
knew what I wanted to do. Yep. And so going into that video edit, like I knew how to do cutting and yep. putting together, but all right, I wanted to do this. Google, yeah. how do I do this? And there's like a one minute video oh, yeah. on, you know, Premiere Pro to yep. show me how to do what I'm trying to do. And it helped me get through it. Now, I probably forgot that shit, but I also know now Google's a fucking oh, know, yeah. couple of keys yeah. away, you right. know? So, but yeah, you got to know what you want to do. Same thing when people ask me about painting, man. How do you do silver leaf? I'm like, yeah. which part? Yeah. Not the entire thing. Yeah, there's thing, more right? than just one stage. It's like I did that little short video of Chris Ryan on how to paint candy on that Lincoln Continental. Yeah. And basically it works on to almost gun theory on angles. And it's like, because you can't tell people how to spray candy, you know, because yeah. it's like, there's so many steps. It starts with mixing the paint all the way to spraying the paint. And it's yeah, like, it's like, okay, here's you know? what you do. You start 10 years ago. Yeah, you start yeah. 10 years ago. And you practice. Yeah. First off, you yeah, get a piece of Yeah, because candy paint's not what candy paint was. Any, yeah, any, I mean, every, you've had... Because you're, you're painting with... You're painting with two stages now. It was four or five stages before. Yeah, so know? back in the day, and then even now, like, we do most – because technology with the, the chemicals has gotten better, we're able to use the candy concentrates instead yep. of having to use the full um, yep. uh, urethane-hardened-based candies yep. uh, to where we can actually do graphics. And it, it made the process easier, but somehow it made it more expensive. <laughs> Always. Right? Yeah. I don't know. Materials. So Well, they had to pay more people. So when you got to pay more people – or a corporation, more. we got to make more money than we did yeah. last year. So well, that's the thing. That's the bad thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the same thing they run into with like government stuff. Is like they get a budget for a certain amount. They got to spend that amount just so they can get that amount next year. And that how the military you know what, does it? Yeah. 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 So it should be one of those ones where like, hey, look how good we were. We still have ten grand left. All right. Well, you get what you had last year, and you get to keep the ten grand. You know. So like, that's good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. Like the the photography thing. It's like I don't even know what I want to do with it. Yeah. Like you know, we I think we talked about it a little bit. Like you're one of the rare. I'm not going to say rare, but, like, you're you're one of the guys that, that figured out a, a financial path with photography, yeah. which all my local friends and all the people that I've made that I would consider, like, at my level or a little bit above me, not quite where you are in yeah. a professional sense, but just, you know, enthusiasts, right? right? Everybody's flundered of how do I turn a profit in this and, you know, like, I have my ideas, and I'm not asking you to, to tell me how, but I'm just saying, like, for such a massive world of photography, right? It seems like the only way to make money in photography is to go get a job at a photography shop. Well, <laughs> so that is a good way. I mean, because really now what you do is guys get the job working for a place that, you know, like they're a big manufacturer and they're around cool cars all the time and they go to SEMA and all that stuff and they're the guy that makes the content. Mm -hmm. But they're not really paying those guys yeah, you know? like the, a lot of the Harley dealerships will have a media guy, and he has yeah, to take yeah. pictures of all the bikes. Yeah, he has to do all the updates. And it's like that becomes like that ain't art. No. You know what I mean? Like no, that's not creation. Well, it's the same as the guy that takes pictures of the car as the dealership for them to put on the website to sell. You know, they don't want artsy pictures. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, but, we need you to unblur that background. <laughs> yeah, and then my wife will probably take offense to you saying that I make a profit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, well, the thing is, is we spend a lot of money true. because. Yeah. What keeps me busy is the fact that I'll go anywhere, you know, and it's like all I want to do is take pictures. Like I'll shoot, I'll shoot every day, mm -hmm. you know, and I have no problem shooting every day because that's what I love to do, and I love being around cars and bikes and anything with wheels, and it doesn't really matter if you like it. I want to shoot it, yeah, you know, and and a lot of people, you know, they see my work and they're going, I'd love to have him shoot my bike, but obviously he's way too expensive. I'm like, you'd be surprised, <laughs> you yeah, know? just ask like him. if you're not a company. I, I, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm definitely on the, we'll work for food sometimes. And <laughs> so, but well, it's the other thing, uh, like I had something there and, oh, that's, that's like me. It's all like, so old, well, old age catching up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, what were we talking about? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did someone take a picture? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, yeah, that's, that's the weird thing about it is, uh, figuring out how to, the other thing that, okay, what I was trying to say was like, I've, I'm at a point where it's a couple of things. One thing is, like, I don't really want to make any money right now. Right. But I don't want to step on the toes of the guys out there that do make money doing the kind right. of photography yep. that I do. Yep. So it's a very, very weird place to be because I've been fortunate enough to be able to shoot, you know, for Simpson, for yep. a magazine, um, or, or for their ad ads for yep. their magazine. I ain't going to get paid for that shit. But, but you know? there's plenty of work. And that's yeah. the thing is a lot of people get jealous. Like a lot of the stuff that people get jealous that I do, I may not have gotten paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, it must be nice. And I'm like, I didn't get paid for that. <laughs> you yeah, know? that makes sense. So, or they see the sponsor names that are painted on the back of the Sprinter and they go, oh, it must be nice to get that stuff. But like I traded 
photo shoots for the equipment that's on the Sprinter. I didn't just yeah. get handed stuff, you know? Mm. So it's just one of those ones like Kelderman. I have their air suspension on it, but I traded them like five, six, eight photo shoots, you know? And then the guys who built the Sprinter, they wound up realizing they had to gut it to paint it after they quoted me the price. So I wound up getting them bumpers and air suspension for their shop dually. Mm -hmm. So I did photo shoots for that stuff too. <laughs> so it's like, so everybody will see all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, yeah, I didn't get paid for any of that stuff. You know? Yeah. That's, that's kind of thing. The other thing that I, like, I don't know if I want to get paid Yeah, because I, right now I really love it and it's an, it's an enjoyment. But you kind of owe it to the guys who do get paid yeah. to get paid. Because it does work that way. It's like people doing sure. free paint jobs. And it's sure. like you're not helping anybody by doing it for free. Yeah. Because that person from then on, that person's not going to pay you later. Yeah, you so, know? you know, what I was thinking, so I, I officially, I've, I've always had a camera, right, for the last right. five years. But this is the first year that I've actually had a full frame, dug deep, actually trying to learn and actively am shooting all the time. Before, I would use it for my shit and my travels and my things. Yep. But now it's like, you know, I hit up dudes that just finished building bikes. Like, hey, man, like, uh, when you get back into town, like, I'd love to shoot your bike because I need that 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 practice to go. Well, when you shoot get a friend or when you somebody. get people that are true professionals, I'll put that in quotes, mm -hmm. <laughs> like myself. Um, I'm really into it for the finished product, so I want to shoot everything, mm -hmm. but I can't. But everything should be shot for sure. You know, like yeah. I'm still sh I've shoot stuff that was a legit car five or six years ago that nobody wants to shoot because I love the car. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's like, it has nothing to do with the fact of how much I'm making. It's like, well, I just talked to Rob Ida today and then he had a Willis that he showed way back in the day. And I remember when I was first in the show cars, I was like, oh, that thing's so badass. And I was like, I saw a picture of it on his page. I was like, I still want to shoot that. And he was like, that what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I was like, it's, it's a legend. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's like, I still like to shoot legends, you know, and there's still bikes that show up and stuff. And well, that's kind of thing. It's like, I, I know that eventually I want it to be a source of income. Yeah. But uh, like I said, right now with until I fully have the confidence I don't want to, because the way my brain works is if yeah. I take a dollar right now, yeah. then that switch goes on and then now it's, now it's a hustle, Yeah, you know, and then that's kind of why I'm not, I love painting, but I don't like, like painting. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, but that's the thing. You just got to find what you like to do. Yeah. Cause you know, I mean, hell, 10 years down the road, you it may not even involve motorcycles. Ah, you know? uh, yeah. I, well, I think it'll always be around motorcycles maybe, but yeah. you know, with, but it's like, I had a friend, Greg, well, you probably know Greg Janukas. Sounds real familiar. Yeah, so he's shot a lot of motorcycles and stuff. And I met him in Houston. Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah, I know yeah a long time ago. He used to make wallets. Yeah. And so we started talking about photography and lights and stuff like that. Next thing I know, he's taking pictures and stuff and shooting bikes. And he got really good at it. And I was like, man, he's like, but he just has it. Like, whatever he does, he does. And then next thing yeah. I know, he's shooting bands like Gary Clark Jr. and stuff like that. And you see his pictures. And it's like next level, like, doesn't look like anything anybody else is shooting. And it's like, when he was shooting bikes, it looked like somebody else's stuff. Mm. But then he found his niche, and it was bands and that kind of chopper lifestyle stuff he still does. It's like, doesn't look like anybody else's stuff, too. Yeah. But, like, his level, but that's just that artist brain. Like, he's always been an artist. Like, he was good at the wallets. He was good at shooting bikes and cars. And then he just found this niche with the bands where he just kills it. And it's like, every time his stuff pops up my feet, I'm like, yeah, I'm not a photographer. <laughs> it's like, I don't even feel I'm like, yeah. It's like, that's a photographer. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good point, though, because, you like know? I said, I, that's something that I, I've been trying to do, too, is just shoot a lot of different shit that's not in yeah. my, well, I guess, well, wheelhouse. Well, you, you have to go you know? out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, it's like, I want to shoot more portraits this year because I'm actually really good at it. Mm -hmm. But then I just get to where, like, I got this, it's the hassle of not having to deal with models and then getting guys who build cars, they don't normally want to pose for anything. Yeah. You know, so, but... 20 years down the road, you know, I mean, that's the pictures, those guys, it's not going to be the pictures of the cars. They're going to, they're going to remember that moment yes, where they're yes. with the car and all their stuff. And it's like, I kind of like to let them have, you know, like when they yeah. look back, they're part of the moment, not just like, Oh, this is this car I built. You See, know? I, I like doing that too. And I feel like every time I ask them to stand behind and, or stand by the bike or something yeah. that I get this uncomfortableness. But yeah. what I like to do is, is like set them up. So I say, all right, so move the bike like this. And while they're moving the bike, yep. You get more of these natural yep. movements and, like, normal, normalcy out of it. Yeah, that's why I always say bikes are so easy because of that. Because, one, you can put it on a sidewalk somewhere and yeah. almost anywhere and shoot it. Yeah. And uh, But then people actually have to interact with the bike more. Like, if someone's 
they got to get them to move the car. They got to get in the car so you don't see them. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can catch them. Like that video, I've got, I put all those parts of him walking up in the car and getting into it. Yeah. It's just all little stuff that probably, I could have made the video two minutes shorter <laughs> if I would have cut out all the interactions of him with the car. Yeah. But I think that's what made that video good. And that's why I was like, oh, no one's watching it. <laughs> it's like, I actually, I feel like I have a flow to this video. So. You probably posted at the wrong time. Yeah, it's probably. <laughs> But, you know, that's, that's kind of thing. It's probably because like, I'm in it talking. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted, you know, like, I don't know that, like, in my head, like, I don't really have, put like this, I don't think that I want to shoot models. Yep. But if you haven't, but I you haven't. should. Yeah, so. and that, that's that's where I'm at. Like, I want to I see what it is. I want to yep. see if I'm good at it. Yeah. Because maybe I don't really think I'm good at it, and maybe yep. it's not something I want to do. But in, in, in this, like, like look for photography to find out something I Well, the I can hardest part with dealing with models is you have to have the patience to have, cause like when you shoot someone's bike, Hey, put your bike over here. Mm-hmm. And that guy walks away. But if you're trying to shoot a model, they have a job to do. And usually the best thing to do is girls all know how they look their best is just let them show me what you got. You know, like kind of that kind yeah. of thing, you know, unless, unless you have, cause now because there's every picture ever taken is on the internet, I almost think you should have a mental Pinterest page of what you've seen that you really like for like True, poses. Yeah. And then you try to interact that, but not every, it's kind of hard to explain well, those poses, yeah. you know? So it's, so usually it's best let the, the girl do well, whatever, you know, my, our buddy, uh, Tim O'Keefe, he, he does really amazing. I, I like his style of photography when it yeah. comes to women. Um, and he, you know, talking with him, he's, he's kind of the opposite of that where he has studied this so long. I mean, that's yep. kind of his background. To where he knows how to move the shoulder to, oh, to yeah, show yeah. definition yep. and yep. and the eyes and this and like he has this view and then you get his photo. Well, that's you if know? you if you look at all the people who are great at women's bodies and models and stuff like that, they've all usually had an art background as far as actually drawing the human body. True, you know, so that you know all the muscles and the angles and all that stuff. Which I'm pretty decent at it with you know with my lighting and stuff. But there's just some people, it's, you know, you just see it. But I'm that way with cars. Like, I yeah, see the yeah, way the light sure. hits cars and motorcycles before I even fire the light, you know. And it's some people have that for you, people. Same thing, with, dude, same thing, man. Like, when, I, when I'm when i shooting a bike, like, I know the angle. Because when I'm painting a bike, I usually sit around it, and I'm looking at every angle, and yep. I'm like, fuck, right here, yep. right there. And so when you shoot it, it's the same thing. Like, this is the angle. Yep. And then, you know, when you're riding, like, I always tell my buddy all the time, I'll be riding a bike. And my other buddy will be right there. The sun will just be going down the trees. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, dude, if I just yeah. can just. And that's right those there. ones. But that's how easy photography is, is those moments. You can do a phone under your arm and you got that picture. Yeah. Because you can see it, you know. So that's, I think I'm going to do that a little bit of tutorial on my ph- photography page. More for those moments for people, like yeah. actual normal people. Because like guys building cars and bikes. Are, they always need build picks and build books yeah. and just show people how to do the simple stuff with a phone or just one of the new pocket cameras. Cause the pocket cameras, the best thing about them is what you see on here. That's the picture it takes mm-hmm. in the same way with your phone, you know? So it's, that's, I'll probably do some small stuff on that with using shop lights and stuff like that. You know, one of the biggest things that I've been getting lately is a lot of other painters have been reaching out and talking about like, man, like, I'm starting to think about I need to get into photography just yeah. for the ex, like to expose my work in the best possible way yep. in the world rather than you know not this is good you know this yep. is really good but it's just, it doesn't show metal flake yeah it's yeah. it's gonna give you a very flat image yep. uh, that has no range to where you can kind of edit it or, or pull anything yep. in and out of it and you know but at the same time it, like there's a couple techniques that so many people can just jump on any of the million YouTube channels. And go, okay, how can I take a better picture with my phone of this thing and understand basic, basic lighting things, which I'm not a lighting expert. <laughs> I'm still I'm still exploring basic things. Yep. You know, sometimes I'll light something and I'm like, fuck, that looks good, but yep. it's not showing my artwork. Right. So now I gotta figure out how to get more light and do this and do that. Well, the the best thing with Metal Flake is Metal Flake wants light. Mm-hmm. So it's you don't really want direct, but you wanna skim it with light. Mm-hmm. That's why I was that you had that one the other day and people were like, put a polarizer on. I'm like, yeah, that's going to make it worse, <laughs> you yeah. know, because the polarizer is not going to take that hot spot out, you know, because that hot spot. Someone be told there. me that a long time ago and yeah. I bought them and I'm like, that didn't work. Well, <laughs> polarizers are nice for straight black cars, mm-hmm. you know, because you can take, especially if you're shooting it next to something that's reflecting on the side of it. Mm-hmm. That's 
the and but it has a tendency to over contrast paint, mm -hmm. so I'm not a huge fan because a lot of people are like, you should do use a polarizer. I'm like, but it makes the red super like ruddy looking, and it's like you'll see a lot of the super high end retouched yeah. aftermarket car pictures, and the blues are like that. It doesn't look that color yeah. blue. It doesn't look that color red, and a lot of it's that whole over contrasted. See, that's the know, thing. Reds that, and blacks. And that's blues the thing. And, like what you're doing. Like yeah. if, they, if one of these guys build this car, like you don't want to stylize this photo to the point where it's not the actual. Yeah. Well, the hardest part that I do sometimes is like there's El Camino I shot and it looks like when you see it with your eye, it looks like just a really nice, deep, dark brownish burgundy color. Mm -hmm. But when the light hits it just barely, you get a little bit of metal flake in it. But it's one of those ones where, like, you don't really see the metal flake, but unless the sun hits it at an angle. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just buried in that color. Mm -hmm. So when I shot it, I was just trying to streak the edges of, like, where the body lines were. To so get you that. could get that little bit of metallic around yeah. the body line, but you still kept the side of the truck looking like a slick, super straight car, you know? Mm. So you just have to – sometimes it's restraint. <laughs> and, well, I always tell people – because everybody goes out and buys lights. That, oh, I got three lights. I'm lighting this thing with three lights. And I'm like, start with one. Mm -hmm. Try to get it close with one because more than likely you probably need two. Mm -hmm. But everybody starts with three or four, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Because yeah. I have friends that shoot stuff, and it's like they'll light the picture front to back, which is the way they used to do it in film. Because you were talking about people that shoot models. The great photographer for Hot Rod over the years, Randy Lorenzen, mm -hmm. he actually used to shoot for Playboy. So he yeah. was a Playboy photographer, and then he posted a picture the other day where he's on a set with Bernadette Peters taking her picture, and it's like his stuff. There's a podcast on Hot Rods by Boyd's podcast where he talks about doing Catzilla, and it was lit all the way front to back, long exposure, you know, so it's like pop these lights, pop these lights, pop them. and it's all like that's exactly how it was shot on film, you know, and mm. it's just like it's – it's pretty amazing to listen to because sometimes you forget where we came from. Have you, ever, <laughs> you know, have you found like any like podcast areas that, about like photography that's interesting? Because uh, I have not. I've been looking, dude. It's I every time I find one I like, I listen to it for about three weeks, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not a. Uh. I've even found and one almost that all I can the like. ones that are decent are like guys from the British guys. Mm. Like it's not even stateside guys, and they're so artsy compared to me that I'm just like. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, but I don't know how they would, could do it different. You know, I mean, because it, it is a photography podcast, so it's going to be boring. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, exactly. I mean, it's, but if, if you could get one, it's more of a lifestyle. Like, we're, you and I are sitting around, we talk about cars, talk about bikes, we talk about taking pictures. Like, if you could do every episode like that, where it doesn't really exclude people. Yeah, you're talking about actual experiences. Yeah, exactly. Well. Experience and yeah. stuff. There's a few commercial photographer ones, but it's a lot of the stuff just turns into like why I'm better than somebody else is, you know? And it's yeah, just like, yeah. I'm like, I'm not better than anybody, you know, because yeah, everybody exactly. has a different eye. Everybody has a different look. And it's just, you know. There's just also this weird thing I get whenever I, like, I tell people I want to shoot it. Like, hey, yeah. man, I want to shoot your bike. They're like, oh, fuck yeah, cool. And then yeah. I'm like, fuck, now I actually have to <laughs> do a good job. Like, I have to walk away with something because yeah. I've I, like I went and shot photos last night on the way to bike night and I'm like didn't like any of them you yeah. know well I always cool get spot, the, just I always not. get the funny one too because I'll go to people I'm like I really want to shoot your car and they're like well how much and then if my wife's standing there she's like yeah how much and I'm like I just want to shoot it <laughs> <laughs> but that was the good thing with magazine days is like you could shoot it and you could get paid by magazine yeah you know and now since there's not as many magazines like I have friends with so many great motorcycles right now and it's like I have nobody to run them I actually even, I don't know if you know Jesse Greening from Greening Auto Supply. Yeah. So that does all the billet stuff for the hot rods. Mm -hmm. He just finished a Harley mm -hmm. and it's so awesome. It's kind of like a cafe racer. Yeah. But his little parts he made for it and everything are amazing. I can't wait to shoot it. But it's like, I was talking to Brian Clock in Arizona when we were sitting there looking at him. I was like, you got to help me get somebody to run this bike. Cause I was like, I'm going to shoot it and somebody needs to pay me. <laughs> yeah. You know, like the only real magazine left that's not like a super artsy one is yeah. like cycle source. And yeah. I, don't, I don't think they really cut checks No. And then, um, all like the new easy rider that's out now. Like, or I don't even think they're actually doing it anymore. Yeah. I think they well, I really, I really like it when someone just hires me to do it and then yeah. they get the, like, Hey, cycle source wants this. I'm going to pay you. I'm like, cool. Cause then they have their pictures. They can and do then they, they can do what they it, want yeah. with them because I, I prefer that over actually getting sent on a magazine because a magazine sometimes you'll shoot it there'll be an editor change like yeah I don't want this so I was like well I'm just I'm out of the so I'm out on that I shot a bike in Sturgis they ended up and I'm I'm super stoked it's in the magazine yeah. you know but 
yeah, like in the magazine, though, the photos are horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it's like they put, you know, they put it on that whatever that, that Adobe fucking, yep. you know, magazine print thing. Yep. And then they throw like color grades on that and yep. then it fucks up my color grade. Well, that's like my stuff a lot of times will look horrible in a mainstream magazine mm-hmm. because the paper's so thin. So you lose all the deep colors and stuff in it that I do. And it's just kind of like, eh. But then when you see it blown up like one of these prints in here, you're like, holy crap. And I'm like, yeah. Eh. Yeah, because if I took that exact same picture standing beside you with that and my camera took it, I mean, I know there's – it would still – just that way that medium format camera takes pictures, you're just yeah. like – you know, you can tell a difference. Oh, for sure, you know? yeah. And it's, well, you know, the good thing about both of those two pictures were random photographers that yeah. were there that shot it. Oh, they're great shots. You yeah. know, like that dude was there. He gave him, I gave him yeah. my email, and then he emailed me that photo like the next day. Um, the only one I did, I shot that one of my wife of yeah. that helmet yeah. for the magazine. That's a good one because it shows the helmet well, but you can see her eye really good through the visor. Yeah. I'm stoked about it. Yeah. But but is she stoked about it? <laughs> I really want my face out. No, I, I, I like shooting that. Like That's at her barbershop that yeah. she works at. And, and it, uh, that barbershop's really cool. It's yeah. It's got all the right decor awesome. and it's, go, it's a garage style. So yeah, I need, a, I need to, next time I'm in the area, I need to hit you up ahead of time and be like, hey, have her pencil me in. Yeah. She's she's working tomorrow. Yeah. Which is not today. Yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> but, um, you know, I wanted to, I, I, I want to try the model thing, but I don't know how to navigate it. And I don't even know, you know, because I, I see the chicks that, that my buddy Tim O'Keefe shoots, and yeah. I'm like, fuck, man. Like, and then I'll see her page, and I'm like, I didn't see that. Yeah. It, what, what he pulled out of the photo yeah. and what her yeah. – she looks like I didn't see that, so yeah. I'm like, maybe I don't really have yeah that an eye for well, that. Well, it's you know? tough too because like you don't want to be mean to somebody that you really don't want to shoot with, yeah. You know, because like I've shot stuff for magazines and they're like the guy wants to shoot like his girlfriend with it, and I'm like, it's like, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. all like, right, run in real quick. I'm like, yeah, I've done a. There's been a few, right? Even like car show coverage where you're like, girl wants to be in the picture, and you're just like doing that fake click, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I wondered like if I was actually to shoot with an actual woman that is more of a professional model, yeah. if like well, it would ease that kind of you thing. You need to, as a beginner, mm-hmm. is try to get into where you can get models with experience. So I know you said you don't mind paying to look at instructions. So there are camera clubs, and if you go to probably one of the local camera stores here in Dallas, you can probably find some deal where they're doing photo deals with models. And it doesn't really hurt to go do it when it's not your style. Yeah. But what you learn is like dealing with the model and you're getting, you're dealing with somebody that knows how to pose. Yeah. You know, cause the hardest part is getting somebody like, well, I've never done this before. So then you're both have never done it before. Yeah. Pull you know, your titty out. I know. I hate to, I hate to, <laughs> I hate to make this analogy because my wife will get mad, but it's like two virgins. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, you ain't neither one of them are good at it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? So if you get no, one bro, that knows, I, I lay it down, bro. So if at least one of them knows what they're doing, <laughs> you know, it makes yeah. it way easier. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I know what you mean. That that's kind of the hard thing. It's like it's not the and preferably the woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I, I don't know that I don't even know what it. I don't know. Like I said, it's just like exploring all the different uh, fields of photography. Yep. And and you know, like oh man, like this this really felt good doing it. Like I've shot my wife a hundred times, but. You know, like, I'm also her husband, so I'm like, yeah. no, like, fucking this. Like, turn your head, like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I can't do that to a fucking... Well, that was, like, even me getting into YouTube is you start looking at other, the popular photography stuff and everything's so serious and dry, and I'm just like, that's not me. Yeah. You know, and I, I feel like mine's still way more serious than I actually am. And so there's a guy that does landscapes from England, the photo tripper, and he travels around in, like, an RV and shoots landscapes. And I figured if they can make it interesting that they shoot a lake and a mountain every video, then I think I'll be okay. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> at least my cars change every time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like all they get is like, this is fall, this is winter, this is spring. That's, and it's the same spot. So you know? how would you kind of classify what your video, just videos you're making, or would you consider it more of a vlog type thing? Uh, it's more, it's... It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's a little bit of both. Yeah. Uh, I really want to, I do want to show people what I do, mm-hmm. but I also want to show what I'm shooting. 
And I'd rather the people who built what I'm shooting talk about what I'm doing. I really don't need to be in there telling the people. The one that you were in, the blue uh, 50, that you drove in the car with them and you were getting some Oh, videos. yeah, yeah, the one like, with That it. one was cool. Yeah, so I like that stuff. And it was like, I actually, that was probably my first video that I actually was happy with. And it was funny when that one starts and that person's on that little glide thing in the air. I was like, my wife's like, you should film that. I'm like, that's dumb. So she got my camera and filmed it. And that was the beginning of my video. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, that's dumb. Nobody wants to see that. That's man. But that car like, is that car is rowdy, and it's like that's the cool thing with video is if you see a picture of it, yeah, it's a cool '57 mint green Chevy, but you don't realize what the big block sounds like in it, mm -hmm. and that it legit goes, yeah, you know. Yeah. So in the video, you see that it goes, and you get to hear it running, and then that's the best part of that video. In fact, when I posted just him backing out of the garage on my Instagram page, like yeah. it just blew up like crazy on Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. and uh, that's the hard part is because I'll do those little teasers and I'll post a video later and it's like I don't think I get the people coming over people are lazy, to man. see the video after I 1000% so. I, I think that most of the people that are on Instagram don't give a shit about YouTube no they don't yeah and so it's like a different crowd because when I'm around dudes that are like legit like YouTube dudes yeah like their subscribers are way different than like followers to oh, yeah, people yeah. on Instagram. Well, that's the thing is, is like when I followed some of the mountain bike guys and they're on Instagram, I'm like, I'm killing them on Instagram. But then they go, they've got 200,000 followers on YouTube. And that's like, well, they just oh, focus get, more of their energy. They're on getting YouTube. paid for yeah. that. Instagram ain't giving me nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know what Instagram gets me? Other pages stealing my stuff and posting it and not giving me any credit for it. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in that, that, I'm that How in do you, you do that, bro? <laughs> I'm in that boat with you, man. I understand yeah. that now. It's like, and then what's crazy is I don't care if people share my stuff. Just yeah. put my name on it. Actually, if they put the name of the person who built it on it, that's all I really care about. Right. You yeah, know? They don't even do that, man. Like, yeah. they'll just straight rob the photo yeah. and put their own tags on it. And like, yeah. dude, like. To, it, yeah, I catch people t putting their watermarks on my pictures, like, for their page. Wow. You know? And it's just like. Even, yeah. like, whenever, like, I use someone else's photo yeah. in, like, like for the, for the podcast thing. Yeah. Like, I'll tag in the actual thing. Like, this was shot by so-and-so yeah. because. I understand it. Well, man. and the bad part is too is social media makes it easier to steal stuff and post it than it does to go, hey, that person stole that from me. There's an app called Repost. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, but you don't mind Repost because usually it reposts from you. Yeah. But when someone does a screen capture and posts it, and you have to go through this all this copyright BS through Instagram or Facebook, it's like it's not worth the hassle. Yeah. You know. I did have one time I was uh, trying to make a quick ad for like one of our campouts. Yeah. And so there was this this chick standing on the side of a road holding up a sign that was blank. Yeah. I was like, this must be stock photography, yeah. stock shit that we yeah. all use and put our own shit in it. Yeah. So I did. This chick called me up, <laughs> threatening to, like, actually, she said, hey, if you're going to use my picture, tag me. And I was yeah. like, I should have just tagged her. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, you should have. Now we're going back to lessons, <laughs> lessons you'll learn shooting models. But see, at the thing, like, I didn't <laughs> I, I didn't get the picture from her. Right. And it was from some other dude that was using it as well, and there was no tags of yeah. her well, on that Yeah, well, what you should have done has been like, hey, I just found it on a Google search. I apologize, and then tagged her on it. And that's like, So cool. this is what happened was, like. Yeah. So this is what actually yeah. happened. So what I should have said was <laughs> yeah. nothing. <laughs> well, she she messaged me and said, hey, uh, you know, kind of, kind of cunty, yeah. uh, like saying, like, you know, about using her image. I was like, I, I got it from this person. I didn't see her tags. Otherwise, I would have tagged you. I'm sorry. Yeah. And she said, and then she kind of said something out snarky, but I was like, all right, I'll just delete the photo. Yeah. And then she hits me with like, well, you definitely gained from my photo being on your page. Yeah. She's like, this bitch had like 2,000 followers and yeah. shit. It's like, then why were you so adamant about me tagging you? Like, you yeah. wanted the exposure my page yeah. was going to give you. Yeah. I just took it down because I felt like this was getting awkward and weird and not what right. I really wanted it to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. And now you're threatening to yeah. get a lawyer? Yeah. I was like, come on, bro. Yeah. Chick, well, I whatever. guarantee she probably doesn't have the money to. Yeah. <laughs> push she probably that bangs a dude that does. That's yeah. probably generalizing, huh? Don't make me start dating a lawyer. That's good. <laughs> you guys are both getting shut down. I yeah. know. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting canceled. canceled. <laughs> yeah. Good we're thing my wife has a good job. Not just kidding. Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my career in, in, in video might not go very far, yeah. but uh, I'll be all right with painting. Well, that's the thing, too, is, like, you have to, like, you want to show what you do, but you want to show everything. Like, you want to have a little bit of privacy. So that's the part, too, is just figure out what you do. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to make a video of a van tour because everybody makes a van tour. Yeah. And it's like, I'm probably going to call it, 
do you actually own a van if you don't do a van tour? <laughs> you know? So I just put it, it's in the background of all my videos. So like all the van people come on and like, what is that? And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's the van's that's, dope. I mean, that's, that's a bad mofo with a lot of custom paint on it. <laughs> It'll know? be interesting to see. Like, you oh, know, it's got wheels on since the last time I was here too. For real? Yeah. Method actually came out with a set of dually sprinter <laughs> wheels. So they shipped them to innovative that painted it mm-hmm. and they powder coat them like a heavy metallic copperish color for me. <laughs> and then Jeremy at lucky strike, put some blue and where it said method. So there's a little bit of color pop on the wheels. Nice. And yeah, so it's, it's, it's getting closer to, it's funny cause it went to SEMA in 2017 and it's still not done yet. <laughs> cause like every two weeks I'm like, we should do this. Like we just got the boxes for the back. Yeah. So the uh, company Al Vans, they make one that mounts to the hinges. Mm-hmm. So now I have the plate. Now I'm just waiting for the boxes to come in. So I'm just like, all right, I got the plate. Now I'm just waiting See, on boxes. <laughs> that's kind of the thing. Like, you know, me and my wife, we wanted to do the van thing a couple of years yeah. ago. But now um, we got like four years left on this house that we're yeah. in. And then if I could if I could make this shop work for me for another four years, yeah. then I, I would like to spend like a year on the road and yeah. like have maybe not full on out like sprinter well, that's like when you know when you know what you what you have time wise that's when you should make your plan mm-hmm. you know because it's like i know when i first i rolled over one day and told my wife i was gonna quit my job working as a service manager at car dealerships and i was gonna become a professional car photographer full time mm-hmm. and i was doing side side work at the time and she was she was cool she's like all right <laughs> and uh but it was that one i was like all right, I make a five-year plan and then, like, a year later, I met my five-year goal, <laughs> you nice. know. So, but then what you run in the habit of is, like, all right, I should have made other goals then. Because if you can make it where you're looking out where you need to go, it makes it way easier. Yeah. So, like, that's, like, now I'm, I'm kind of willy-nilly. Like, I'm just running. I hate to use that word, but yeah. I'm just, I'm running around, like, here, there, here, oh, there, here, like- do this. all, And I don't really... I know it sounds bad that I'm 48 and I've had my business for a while and I don't really have a plan. You know, which I'm, I work for, I do work for good guys and I work for car show series and I work for magazines and stuff like that. But I probably should sit down and go, Hey, what's the plan of this? Yeah. You know? So it's like, I'm 48. I should have a plan. Yeah. You know, where are we going to go with this? Well, my plan is I want to keep shooting cars and I want to yeah. keep shooting motorcycles. But you know, if, so they brought some more magazines, came back out, modern rotting and classic truck performance. And there's a few magazines that just came out and we make pretty good money from them because during all this, when people didn't want to travel and there's no car shows, I could go to shops, shoot cars. Yeah. But eventually all that's going to open back up. And then all those guys that shot, well, now I'm, and you don't want to be in that rat race fighting people for car features. Yeah. You know, what's you know? weird about like the, you know, in the, in comparison, listening to you talk on the last podcast and this one is like, there's not a whole lot of shows right in the motorcycle space. And yep. then in the chopper mo- motorcycle space, every dude has a camera around his neck. Right. Yeah. Right. And everybody's a photographer and they're all in, and everybody's doing it for free just to yep. you do this. So yep. it's like, and there's guys that, that are free Lichter? that are good. Yeah. You know, how do you, well, become? I don't, it's, I don't, I don't Lichter even, said this was the first year in 30 something years that he didn't get paid to go to Sturgis. Yeah. And he actually, I mean, he had a show there, but he yeah. was, he didn't. But his go. show is so awesome. Yeah. I is. hate I didn't stop and just walk through. I'm planning, as soon as everything's okay with him, like I plan to go up there to do a podcast with him yeah, at he's, his studio. Dude, he's a legend. Yeah. It's like I look at, I always I always feel bad though because like I don't want to see his new stuff. I'm like, I don't want to see any of this. Show me those ones where you're backwards on a chopper and yeah, you yeah. shot it in 1968. It's like those, are the, those things are just, those pictures are iconic. He's still taking the same pictures, but like it just looks like, some bro on a bagger now yeah you know so like back well, then it's like it's funny how like the chopper dude from the like 78 and shit when he was shooting that stuff yeah. is like timeless now yeah yeah and now we look at like you know he could have made that shot in like 2011 and it's yeah. dated yeah you know because yeah. of because it'll have some crazy stupid paint job yeah. on or something like you, that you can't you know? see his just like part of his head because yeah. the, the wheel's so big yeah yeah <laughs> Well, that's the thing is some of that stuff, like I know, I know the first time I went to Dave Parowitz and that's who you should get him on your podcast too. Yeah. DP and I know Jody, well. they're, they're awesome. And in fact, I'm supposed to do their Facebook live one day and I've been kind of putting that off and I need to do that. But, uh, the first time I went to DP shop, there's that picture of the stinger mm-hmm. from like the 1970s and street chopper with some girl posed on. And I was like, I would give anything to find that woman. And I'm like, I don't need her in a bikini standing next to that bike. Cause he still has that bike. Oh, he does? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and I've shot it, you know, because I, I shot this picture. It's one of my favorite portraits I've ever taken is DP sitting on the Stinger, and it's inside, like, this old warehouse building, and it's, like, one of my favorite pictures. But I was like, man, if we could find that lady, because she'd probably be 70, 
Yeah. And like just just have her stand next because in the pose she's just in a bikini stand next to it. Mm. So like all you need is just her in clothes standing next to it, and it would just be awesome because you just take those two pictures and put them side by side, you know. And it's, I've actually I've been going back and uh, probably everybody hates me for doing this. Uh, yeah. So that's like I got all the 1982s Easy Riders. Yep. So I got my birth year and then I got Playboys right on top of it. Nice. So. But the fun thing about doing that, for one, there was a lot of racist people back then. No <laughs> yeah. doubt. Golly. Well, that's like talk about watching Porky's. We were talking oh, yeah. about watching Porky's for the first time in forever, and I was like, I don't remember this being bad when I was like <laughs> 17. <laughs> or even watching Convoy. Like, I grew up in a family of truck drivers, and I remember the Convoy because there was trucks in it. It was awesome. Then you watch, and it's like, this movie's super political. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what they, which way they leaned. Yeah. You know, like, so, like, the reason I wanted to, obviously, I wanted to have my birth year magazines and stuff, but... When you look at it for the photography, like not so much yep. the Easy Rider, because yep. I don't know, like that shit's kind. of, I mean, there's Bush. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to see the girl now that was in the 1980s Easy Rider because she wasn't. She was a little rough in the 1980s. Yeah, so she didn't polish. At, yeah, out. so I, I mean, don't think she probably didn't get any better. Yeah, but no, the Playboys though. Like, there's actually. Like in my opinion, much more quality photography. Oh yeah, yeah. The, you, you know, Playboy was always next level stuff. You yeah. know. So, but that's like Randy, like I said, that shot for Playboy, then shot cars, but he put all that style into shooting the world's most beautiful women into the world's most beautiful cars, mm. you know? And it's like, I still go back and I can flip open an old magazine and like Randy shot that, you know? Yeah. Of all, like I have my, my pile of like my photographers that I think influence me the most, yep. you know, and you being one of them. But you're one of the few on the list that actually uses backgrounds yeah. to really enhance it, yep. you know? And, and it's not that I don't like backgrounds, yeah. but I don't like when photographers only use the background. Well, they background. use it as a crutch. Or they, it's like yeah. every, every everybody and their mom is looking for a set of wings or a graffiti wall, right? <laughs> yeah. To do a photo shoot. Well, that's what's but, funny is like I haven't shot in front of a graffiti wall since mini trucking. Yeah. You know, so I shot for mini trucking in like the late 90s, 2000s or whatever yeah. it was, you know? And it's like, because it just takes away from what you're shooting. I mean, it's cool if you shoot like in a garage or an old building and, it, and it's part cluttered. of what yeah. it does, you know, it's part of it, you know, but when you do it and it's totally, I mean, sometimes that works too. Cause I'll do that a lot of times where I'll shoot like a super high end car in a super crappy spot because it's just like, Whoa. well, the time that he went to Sturgis with me, we all, we would always go to rapid city and hit the yeah. uh, graffiti alley. Oh up. yeah. Yeah. But I like the long alley shots yep. where the graffiti's like, you know, you get the little. Well, that's the lead. best because you don't really want it as the bi background mm -hmm. unless it has like, if you've got something cool. Like there was one in Houston at one time that had like Zeus or God and he had a spray can out like this and it was like rainbow paint coming out of it. So like I put a bike at the bottom of it so it looked like God was <laughs> painting the motorcycle. Yeah. So like that's cool. That works, yeah. you know, but if it's just like a whole bunch of lines and it's just some hacky graffiti yeah. stuff, it's like, eh. That, that's what I would see a lot, yeah. and then like, I guess to now that I'm a little bit better at shooting pictures, it's like I can talk shit about people not as good as me. <laughs> no, nah, well, what a lot of people would do is like, oh man, let's go shoot some pictures for our bikes today, and then they'd all go find a graffiti wall, and then they'd all raise that contrast up on their fucking yeah. slider ball well, bars. The thing is, is you like you have to train your customers. It's just like when you painted, yeah, and you like somebody they don't really know what they want. They just have they've seen pictures before, so like oh. This. Have you ever had any of your cut, like, people repost your stuff that's, like, theirs, but then they'll edit it in the Instagram? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to. Yeah, when I used to be on that ham message board back in the day for the traditional hot rods. Yeah. Like, I had a bunch of guys that were, like, painters. Like, they'd take my photo and then make art off of my photo. And I'm like, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. And then they get, then they're like, I don't understand why you're mad. It's like you should be flattered that I took what you started. I was like, no, that was my finished artwork. I don't need you to put wings and like a nuclear bomb in the background of it. You know, it's like one of those kind of things. But yeah. Well, I just think like sometimes like uh, when I'll shoot something and I'll tag the person in it and of course they'll repost it, but then they'll use those slider bars on Instagram yeah. and they'll take the photo. Oh yeah. It. That happens all the time. And then I'm like, Oh fuck. Well yeah. Don't tell people I shot that now. Yeah. So I have a funny one. The, uh, when I was at Good Guys, I shot that uh, Tri-5 Chevy that was in the grade 8, that blue one, the brute force car. Mm -hmm. And um, normally I don't let people have pictures until the magazine uses them because inevitably yeah, they'll show up somewhere, you know. And it's like magazines get a little yeah crappy because they the, for some reason they feel like if someone sees the picture on Instagram, no one will buy the magazine now. Like that's their thought process, I guess. So they just want to be surprised, you know. 
But um, so I took a picture of the owner of this car when he came. I was like, oh, just stand next to us. So I took a picture and I just went and sent it to him because we were me and one of the other photographers were talking about how he had to help show him how to save a photo or something the other day. And I'm like, I sent him those pictures of the car. I was like, but we ain't got to worry about him. And we just kind of laugh about it. And I woke up the next morning, the first picture on his feed was him standing next to the car for the one that I took the day before. And I was like, of course. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's the thing is like, even if you tell people, they don't understand. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just like, and even when people like I have, they want to make a print, you have to tell them that when they get to the final thing, turn off autocorrect. Because nothing wrecks my images more than autocorrect because it always wants to, because the stuff that's dark is dark for a reason. Like, I don't want eyes going there. So, like, when you hit autocorrect, it tries to lighten all the shadows in it, and it's just like, ugh. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know what you mean, man. Like, even, even like, trying, I, I found this place in Dallas that could print these, and I had a yeah. shot printed out there, but I wanted to see how it translated, like, from the, the, the computer screen to actual print. Yeah. And so I was stoked about that, and I'm stoked yeah. about the other one. Um, but it's kind of helping me because I would feel like a lot of the images I would shoot would be very, very dark. Yep. And of course, then I'm like on my phone, like raising the, uh, you know, the actual <laughs> brightness on the screen going, Oh, it looks good here at a hundred percent brightness. But you know, my stuff always, I always, mine always looks a little dark on the screen when I'm done with it. And I always second guess it. But usually when I see it printed out, cause I, you, you finally get to where you know what it should look like on the screen compared to what you print. Yeah. So like I always air on the side of a little dark mm -hmm. because then it just becomes contrast, you know, cause a lot of people over brighten stuff when they print it. Cause they don't usually print it like it does when you send it to them. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I have a few printers I use like uh, that Bay photo out of California does really good. And then uh, there's a place image wizards that does metal prints out of North Carolina. That is amazing. They, man, I don't, I mean, I, don't, I haven't really used anybody, but these, these people are in fucking mesquite that yeah. did these. And, uh, you know, that was the most expensive one. I think it was about with the... Well, it's such an odd size. Yeah, you know? so the good thing is you can get them custom sized. Oh, yeah. Well, you I've, know? Done, I've done these, like, I have some that I did five, six years ago because we were doing metal prints for it was a cool thing to do because what's cooler than motorcycles and cars on metal prints? Yeah. It's so, like we've been doing that for over 10 years on metal prints. But we had one, like, the limit used to be a four by eight sheet of aluminum yeah and so we have some four foot by eight foot prints hanging in people's shops i don't, I don't have enough resolution in my images yeah to well that i that one right there but the i was shooting the hasselblad then yeah. so you know it's that guy that that's the oh, that's absolute great. maximum so if i would have went any bigger than that that would have been below the quality they accept well the thing is is when these the bigger the print gets the further away you're supposed to stand out and look at it anyway yeah because really if you look at a billboard if you stood right next to it all you'd see is pixels you know, makes sense because you're meant to see it from a quarter of a mile away, <laughs> yeah. you know, because that's the thing is everybody that's the brag. People are like my camera's so big. I'll take pictures for a billboard. I was like, I hate to break it to you, but a lot of billboard stuff shot with a phone. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's like it's not good photos because yeah. it's all up sampled and, you know, wow. it's yeah. so far away and the pixels are so big. That's the same thing with like my, my airbrush work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meant if, to be seen a quarter ooh, mile away. Yeah, it's, it's, it's meant to be yeah. seen at They're 110 rare. mile an hour. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, I mean, like, uh, I, I try, I've always been there cause I'm, when I'm working on it, I'm like a foot away from it. Right. Yeah. But, but then you step back like, oh, hell yeah. But yeah. then, you know, you get close and well, you get blinded to that. Cause like sometimes like even when I'm, I'm editing stuff, you know, you get in and you start working real close and you're just like, you think it's great. Then you zoom out and you just see, all you see is that spot you were working on. Cause it's like you, you like the color's not the same or yeah. like you clone something out and it's like, it looks perfect up close and you zoom out and you're like, yeah, it looks, I should just left that hot spot in it. It looked better. Exactly. So. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like the, the, the it's like, I, I've, I feel like I've been building all this shit to kind of create uh, other avenues of income to come in that yeah. way. It's like, I like the fact that when I do a helmet, then I know at the end of it, I get to figure out how I can shoot it and make yep. it fun, you know? And sometimes I'll try to take it somewhere and shoot it, but sometimes I got like, I got shipped this today. Yeah. I need to throw some images on it real quick yeah. or get some images out of it. And then I need to get on the, get it fucking gone so I can get paid. Yeah. Um, same thing with bikes. Like I don't really work on bikes. Well, anymore. that's the thing is some pictures are better than no pictures. Yeah. You know, I mean, as long as they're in focus, you it, know? Yeah. And the, the helpful thing now is like, I just now started going, doing manual focus a little bit more. Oh yeah. I shoot everything full manual. Yeah. I, I've everything, but focus was full yeah. manual, but manual. And I, I, when I was in Florida this weekend, I shot a couple of pictures that I just recently posted of my buddy Mark. And uh, I did all that in manual because I would nice. come home and I would be like, all right, bikes in focus. He's not. Yeah. So with that 
the the mirrorless stuff, you know, you can kind of get the. Oh yeah. Uh, well, aperture priority is so good on those cameras now. Mm-hmm. Like if you want, like everybody that seems it shoots family porch is like, all right, set it at two point eight and let the camera do the rest of it. Because <laughs> yeah. it's like I look at the pictures and they're all the same. It's all like, let's over brown everything put the brown filter on it and then just blow all the skin out. So it looks really white. And then like, and everybody's like, these are the best family pictures ever. I like tin type. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's just because you got everybody stand still makes a good family picture. <laughs> you know, it's not that necessarily the photos that good. Well, that's like, I really like that photo you did. And I think you would do good with models because you follow, you got the number one thing right in it is like her eyes in focus. Mm-hmm. Cause that's people. It's amazing how many people like, you don't really want to see a mirrored lens. Like that's, and when portraits, all in the eyes, you know. Yeah. And when you go to cars, it's that all was different stuff. By the way. That was yeah, but fine. hey, it better worked. to be lucky than good. Yeah, and you know what's <laughs> funny? I had a, I had an audience while I was shooting that, so yeah. I was super nervous the entire time. Yeah. And one of the dudes was like high up at Harley Davidson. Nice. And that was actually his bike that she was on. And then her boss was the other guy, and then some, another photographer actually yeah. that uh, that I highly respect. So I was kind of like sweating my back off because that's how fat people sweat <laughs> on our backs. <laughs> I always yeah. like when other photographers are like, I was so nervous because you were there. I'm like, I don't care. I was yeah, like, yeah. everybody's different. I was like, you don't need to impress me. Yeah, it's not that I feel like he was judging them. Yeah. It's just like photography has been such a, a by myself thing, you yeah. know, like shooting my own bike or shooting a helmet or me and my wife every once in a while, you know, shooting her to practice shooting people. And so, like, when you finally start doing it in front of people, like, I, yeah. I don't know, like, I feel like. It's it's an unfamiliar place, you yeah. know what I mean. So well, I ran into the I ran into, I think we talked about it last time as and I didn't do it at all this year. Is like a lot of times I would, I would let the situation dictate where I shot a car or something, where it's like all right, they want to shoot it here, so we're going to shoot it here. But I got to the point now where I'm like, no, I want to shoot it here. Mm-hmm. You know, like I did one in, I shot this great photo of um, Wes Rydell's '54 that Chip Foose built in mm-hmm. front of this bowling alley and That's i could all, yeah. yeah so that one was all neon lit and yeah. stuff and we drove by it and i'm like i want to shoot that car in front of that bowling alley and he's like i want to show you some better spots i'm like no you don't understand i'm going to shoot that car in front of that bowling alley yeah. for myself it's like and it only had one angle that looked good like yeah. i i in my brain when i saw it it's like this is going to look good this is going to look good nope that angle that you see the picture that's the only good angle with that sign the way it was yeah and we got lucky because it was on when we drove by and we came back the light was off they just closed and then uh, he walked up and was like, hey, can we uh, turn the sign on? And I'm out just taking some normal – because the pictures that are without the sign on still look good. Yeah. So I'm shooting, and I'm like, yeah, we'll pop the sign on. So I had it all locked down, so I shot it with and without the neon sign on. That's good. So I didn't get all the color cast on the car. And uh, it's one of my favorite photos. And it's just like – but a lot of my favorite photos lately have just been for people. You know, it's not been for print. It's not been to make big stuff on the wall. Yeah. And it's just like it's – kind of been cool because this whole year like even the stuff i did at good guys it's like this is where i want to shoot it Mm -hmm. you know it's like there's a when i shot that uh brute force car there's a spot where the sun comes over the mountain and it's like this brown grass so it doesn't even look like you're in the desert in arizona Mm -hmm. you know and it's like it really worked good for that car and it's you know i've noticed that like i don't get to travel like when i travel it's like i'm here for a day yeah at most so here I noticed that sometimes I just go drive around now. Oh, yeah. And I like, yeah, I could shoot something. Well, the thing here. that's cool with bikes, too, is you can just find pockets. Yeah, yeah. Like, the whole block doesn't have to be good. Like, if you shoot a car on the side of the road, you have to look down the road, see where the lines are, see how many new cars are parked in the background. You know, like, if you're shooting a 63 Caddy or something like that, the sucker's a mile long. Yeah. But if you're shooting a bike, you're like, let's put up here. Oh, I can see that in the background. All right, turn the bike a little bit. All right, I don't see that no more, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I always I always thought shooting bikes was great because I love metal flake and painters go crazy on motorcycles. So I've yeah. always loved shooting motorcycles. Showing it real well. Yeah. So like I've said this a lot on the podcast, but what I did with like making a page just to shoot photography yep. for, I look I use it because I I always scroll back and I'm like, okay, that man, like I was definitely using a fucking influencer filter on this one. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And then like at first it was like what I was doing was, all right, I want to know how to make that filter on Lightroom. So I go right. and watch a tutorial, and I see yep. what I was – now I understand yep. how to use all the the, the things, yep. all the sliders and well, all the, the things. Well, the thing is, you, I always tell people when you go in with digital, just move sliders. Yeah. It's like it's not – you can just hit reset anytime. Yeah, you exactly. don't. It's not going to hurt it, you know. 
zoom in and look at all the little artifacts, make sure it's not messing up your image. But if you like the way it looks, and you know what's cool with it, if it's a raw image, if you don't like it two years from now, you can go back and redo it. Yeah. So or that's if you learn was, something new. That's what I was also telling some friends is like, I got all these raw images now. So as I get more proficient with, with um, you know, editing, I can go back and revisit these old photos. Because I think I got a, a lot of them are pretty much exposed correctly to where I didn't yep. lose anything. Yeah. And I can always rebuild a photo, basically. Well, I always go by the, I always go by the motto: "It's better to be cool than perfect," mm. because a perfect photo is not always cool, but cool is always cool. Yeah, you know. So it's like I was, I went to Richard Petty's and shot a truck for Keldermans because they were doing trucks with, with Keldermans, mm -hmm. and um, I walked in the basement and there's a picture from back in the day, and it's Richard Petty and his brother, and there's two race cars outside of a barn with some moonshine on the ground. And there's chickens everywhere, and they're wearing coveralls. And it's like the coolest picture ever. I mean, Richard Petty's in it, and there's a couple of race cars in, so it made it really cool. Yeah. But you looked at it, it's like it wasn't. It was by far not a perfect photo. Like there was a lot of stuff wrong with it, but it was just cool. And it's like that's what got me into photography was cool. Yeah, but back then too, shooting film, like you didn't really have. Yeah. You know much. Well, you got to give people a little more leeway because that that whole level of like Randy Lorenz and shooting Cadzilla versus like people shooting just out on the street or a car show. I mean, that's a huge difference. Yeah, that's yeah. a huge skill set. But that's what was lucky for me is I started in film. So, but I was there. I had enough film experience when we shifted to digital mm -hmm. that I wasn't so far in that I couldn't make the jump. Yeah, yeah. Because I had friends that shot cars that, I mean, they still shoot film. And, but they just couldn't make the turn See, I, to I digital. Can't, I can't bring myself to want to learn water base to yeah. save my life. Yeah. Like, I would rather just not paint anymore. No, I totally understand that. Yeah. And that's, but... I think water base is good for collision work because it's so easy to match colors, mm -hmm. but I totally get someone <laughs> wanting to paint it. And, yeah. and can you blame somebody? Say you're 65 years old and you spent paid solvent your whole life and you're yeah. like, now I've got to learn a totally different, different way of painting. I got to dry the paint now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not really interested. But, yeah. And but even to do graphics with paint as water is a pain. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I just don't want to do it. I, I, I think that, um, well, I don't even want to paint. So <laughs> I, I'll stick with taking pictures. I, I definitely want to, you know, like, I've always been pretty hard on my uh, my painting passion or love or career, yeah. and and don't get me wrong, like I I I can never not do this. Yeah. Like I just can't imagine waking up one day and not and seeing Lucky uh, strike Jeremy uh, do a paint job and not be motivated to go do one myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yep. Like I'm always gonna have that competitive respect and yeah. uh, and like wanted to like oh man I want to do that now and and always want to yeah. do it and. I just don't think I can let go of it enough to where I'm like, eh, I'll never do that again. Yeah. But, or not paint my own bikes at least. Yeah. You know, maybe at one point I'll, I'll get to a point where I won't have the time to paint for other people. Like yeah. today I was just talking with Covington again, and I guess in a week and a half I got to go up there and paint another bike. Nice. I love those so, guys. Yeah, dude. I, I get Everybody to, there is awesome. When I'm up there, I'm like, I am I live with Jerry and Kathleen yeah. in their house, and I, I, I hear all these stories, dude, and it's like, Literally going back home or going up there, and I'm I'm sleeping in their house, and I'm just getting to flip through this live audio Easy Rider fucking yeah. history of motorcycles yeah. and and hot rods from these guys, and um you know, yeah. Every time I go in there, I always want to look at old bikes. I don't even want to look at new bikes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I but the new bikes are just as cool as some of the old ones. But I'm like, I like to see a lot of the old stuff they built. That orange truck that they built recently. I yeah. don't, I'm not as perverse in the uh, yeah i need to shoot that thing too hot rod world but yeah just being there and seeing it, it's like yeah. fuck that thing's beautiful yeah yeah i need to shoot that truck too <laughs> it's on my list it's just if you're going that way you're going to go to woodward <laughs> like you don't go yeah, through it's woodward not going in, it's not on the way to anywhere we went there we uh, well i was gonna go to i wasn't even gonna be here this week i was gonna go to floyd data mm -hmm. and Where's go to don at? hardy's the race the race engine place Where's that? Um, just north of Lubbock, by fifty miles. Oh, okay, yeah. And I, but then Don Hardy Senior passed away this week, mm. and uh, so I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna go up now. Yeah. I'll wait yeah. till the first of the year, and then I was gonna go to Amarillo and shoot a couple of hot rods at uh, Mark Warwick's. Yeah, you said you were gonna go there after this, but yeah, I guess after this you're gonna go back to. Well, Austin. no, I'm I'm gonna shoot here today. I'm going. Uh, Shorty's has uh, Shorty the yeah. painter. He has Richard Zochi's Cookies and Cream car. It's like a real famous custom. And it's on my bucket list of cars I want to shoot, and he actually has that car. You shooting it tomorrow or what? I want to shoot it tomorrow or Friday probably, but I think it's going to rain Friday. But I would rather – but if we have a chance for a cloudy day and not rain, I think day. Friday would be pretty nice. And I'm supposed to shoot Jetty's bike sometime while I'm up here that Jeremy painted too. Yeah. 
And uh, in fact, I was supposed to shoot it tomorrow, but he has like five o'clock dinner plans, so I may try and shoot it in the afternoon. He just lives down the street from here. Oh, really? Yeah. I haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah. He was at the Hood Ride. Yeah. I haven't seen him since SEMA. Yeah. yeah. You know, because I think he had a he had a family issue I think last, the last time, time I was I here. Saw him. Yeah, I had a he had a family issue last time I was here, and I was supposed to shoot it. No, he had and just it. lost his battery cover last time he was here. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody stole it. Well, he had just it. got it back. He just got it. So he that stole it because we talked about it the last yeah. time. And then um, and then when I was going to shoot it when he got it back. Uh, he had somebody in his family pass or something oh, like that. Yeah. So it's like one of those ones, yeah. just bad, bad timing all yeah. the time. Oh, shit, I can tell him to come over and yeah. shoot tonight if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to strobe it because of all the flake in it. So, so that's is um, it a nighttime or a daytime thing? I'll probably shoot it during the day. Yeah. So yeah, but I if mean, he's down around here, I can just go over to Waxahachie and shoot it. Yeah. You know, we should just go get the bike and he because he's got dinner plans for tomorrow. And I was like, we're just gonna take the bike. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a good dude, man. He's yeah, no, he's a good dude. I met him at, like I said, I met him at SEMA, and I was like, he's definitely a good dude. So he's we had we partied pretty pretty hard in SEMA together. Yeah, yeah we did. I was yeah. kind of glad we had SEMA off this year, though. I was like, oh, finally. Yeah. Get I was a little off. disappointed because man, I, that was my it's first always year the young going. it's always the young kids that, yeah, are, that they tell me they're disappointed. <laughs> it's it never was awesome, dude. Never anybody over forty that says, oh, I can't believe they canceled. It. I, I'm I'm still learning how to how to deal with SEMA. Like I, I um. I definitely enjoy being there, but it's also like right in a very prime time of motorcycle shit oh, yeah. for me. Yep. So there's other things going on that I, I, I want to be at, and the motorcycle stuff is more um, is is more beneficial for me to be well, at. Well, I like SEMA. that the I like that the paint companies have actually started putting more bikes in because mm. what better way to show your product a lot of it in a small space than to have motorcycles? Yeah. Well, you know? I've heard you know not to talk shit or anything, but I've just heard that seem or. PBG wasn't even going to do it regardless. of. Yeah, this. I was told they weren't. Well, they sold the truck and trailer and all that stuff, too. So, I mean, it's – and I actually, my contract expired with them in uh, the end of last month. Yeah. Or the actually end of October. So, I don't even know if I'm still shooting for them or not. So. Yeah. But I just keep working. It's like when people go, hey, we're going out of business. Cool. I got to keep working. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like – you know. so I don't know if they're going out of business. No, they're not. Like it's they're, just – they're just pulling back. They're just pulling back a lot. But it, it goes in ways because, like, even – DuPont did that right before they sold to Exalta. Like, they pulled everything real far back mm-hmm. and then got real stingy with stuff and uh, didn't really want to spend any money. And then it just comes in waves, you yeah, know. Yeah. So, But the whole driving force, my old boss at PPG was a driving force of all that cool stuff. Christina, you know, like all the cool booths and yeah. making sure all the great painters were taken care of. And she was treated everybody like family. And then when they I, let her go, it was kind of like downhill from there. So. Yeah, I got treated – a million times better at SEMA this year than I have in the past. Yeah. And, you know, well, this so year, because there wasn't a SEMA. Well, I mean, <laughs> last year. <laughs> yeah. But well, no. the, that's the thing is I think everybody, the last SEMA, everybody was probably one of their best ones, even though it was as crowded as it was. Yeah. Like, it just seems like a lot more stuff got done, you know. And then, I mean, I hate to, you know, I, Christina did a great job with PPG and stuff, and it's not fair for the new people that have gotten the job because the they haven't had a chance to yeah. prove themselves or see what they're going to do for the custom world and all this other stuff if, if they do anything. But, you know, it's so with, with you Sherman just have to Williams, wait and find out. Like Sherman you know? Williams, obviously the, the umbrella company that owns PPG, yeah. or not PPG, but uh, House Matrix, Color House of and, Color, yeah. uh, Valspar, all those yeah. things. So they last year that we were there, they just put everything in one booth, yep. and it made this one massive booth. Where no, it was cool because the way they had it set up, because they had, and then when they had famous people in the booth, yeah, like it was Jesse like a central his, spot. His Jesse car. and the Martin, oh, yeah, Joe Martin, and stuff about like that. that. Line, trying yeah. to get uh, autographs. Yeah, yeah, I went to Joe Martin's yesterday. I haven't been there forever, and my buddy, <laughs> my buddy Tommy, from Houston, is their new painter. For real, I've and been I've been mean to, to reach. I don't have Joe's personal number. But yeah, me and Shorty are pretty close. And yeah. Talk to Joe a million times, man. I need to get him on the podcast, man. Yeah. I know he's, that he's doing him more. and Mandy are such just down yeah. to earth people. It's like I think I asked you about having them on the podcast last yeah, time. Yeah, I well, I'll, <laughs> I'm I'm actually uh, I'm probably shooting some cars for him next Friday. So drop my name in. His I'll head. I'll see what he says. <laughs> so now because I'll go down there and you know just bring some of the gear. You didn't have the benefit about coming here to do the podcast is that you get the video aspect. Yeah. Yep. So like that really helps for YouTube. But yeah, you know we just take the audio out of the board and put it on an yep. audio podcast once we actually release this yeah. but um you know. yeah i always i always forget because joe i've known joe for a long time you know and a lot of it's mainly yeah i shot his bikes and stuff but we always hung out because of cars 
Because yeah. he has a really, I mean, his eye for cars. cars yeah, I think his cars are better than his motorcycles. You know, yeah, it's and tough, it's, man, because his car, his style of cars was kind of like that early resto mod era. Yeah, in my but opinion. I think a lot of it came around. You know, it's like I think he was one of the the influencers in that. But I always forget how good his metal work was. I was at the shop yesterday, and we we're looking at the I think like fifty six forties building on, and um, he did some inner fender panels, and then he um, did a lip. On all, because like where the chassis comes, the control arms are, it has to move. So there's that. Usually people just cut a square mm-hmm. to make room. And like he like edged all that stuff. And it's like this is a truck they're leaving patinaed. Like it's going to be a patinaed yeah. truck, but have fender, you know, fender uh, covers on the inside and a nice interior. But it's like he could have easily just, oh, this is going to be black. Yeah. Or just, but Joe just, when it comes to metal work, He's really great He's at it. it. Yeah. Like if you just look at some of his bikes he did in bare metal, like you look at some, you'll think the bike was fiberglass. And he, you'll see pictures of it in bare metal and you're like, Ugh. even some of the early days of yeah. the baggers that he yeah. started doing, like before the wheels got ridiculous. Yeah. Well, that one he did for so shorty, nice. the one with like that yeah. crazy fairing. I shot it in bare metal and it was, yeah. So, yeah, that one looked better in bare metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, like, I, I know. It's, it's. He had, so he, he's always. I think that my love for purple comes from always admiring his paintwork. Oh yeah, yeah. So he like, uses purple better than anybody does. Yeah, and I everything I own always has a purple in it. He and did a great bagger a few years ago. I shot. And I don't think it, I, Hot Bike might have ran it, but it was black with green flames. I remember that one. And yeah. it was just like it wasn't big wheels and stuff. It was just a super clean, clean hot rod style bike, and it was well, like even when I go to Parowitz, his Parowitz did a a road glide or something. It's been done for a while, but it's got his flames and all the flames are gold leafed. Right and now, like, um, right now, I would say the last couple of months in the bike industry, like the flames have like hit hard yeah. on a comeback. Yeah. And I, I've been getting requests for flames like a motherfucker. Yeah. And uh, I always, on I'm too. always bad because like I got to help judge the Parowitz paint show one year and all that stuff and do that. And it's like, as much as I love crazy paint jobs, sometimes people just pull it back just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a huge fan of just solid weird colors right now yeah well that's that's well that's a cool hot rod theme thing because that's like all there's so many great colors out now like even browns from like lexus and stuff like that it's yeah. like there's so many good colors that can stand on their own mm-hmm. and then but they don't make a good base for graphics right you yeah because yeah. i mean is old is i don't want to sound old but like just your solid neutral colors or a solid good dark color with flake or a flake Dude, white with some graphics my bike on. Out. Yeah. it's just fuchsia Nice. <laughs> awesome. But see, that's the thing is unless you're doing like some 80s checkerboard graphics, you don't really graphic that fuchsia metal flake. You yeah. know I mean? it's It really just stands on its own. Yeah. You know, and then I got a brown well, seat What was it? What was the it. one uh, with uh, – was that um, – Paint Huffers, that were they the ones that had Dog Pecker Pink, or was that uh, Dog, Dog Pecker Pink? Yeah. <laughs> who, uh, who who was the popular one before Paint Huffer? That was the name of Roth. The, oh, Little Daddy Roth. I think yeah. I think it was Dog Pecker Pink was their hell yeah their pink <laughs> Dog Pecker Pink. Yeah, I think that was the name of their pink flake. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel like my Champagne Daddy flake is a cool enough name. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we talked about it last time I was here when Jeremy did that flesh collar on Jetty's helmet. Yeah. Like, when I looked at it, I was like, that's the ugliest color I've ever seen. And by the time I left Seema, I was like, I like that color. Yeah. yeah. But that's a good base color. Mm-hmm. You don't want your whole have helmet because it looked like you're just like the tip of a penis. Have you going seen, down the Jesse, road. have you seen that lowrider that, uh, that Cutrate just built for Harley? It's like this pinkish salmon color. Yeah. Dude, it's fucking sick love this bike. Awesome. Dude. It's what it's on a bike or yeah yeah this dude's like my spirit animal for yeah. bikes nice bike builders his style is just like i'm gonna do me who the fuck oh first thing i pop up it's someone watching it's like my face <laughs> <laughs> it's weird better years than mine yeah um uh, no yours is better <laughs> that's why i have all this beard to hide what i really look like there's a picture of me from the race this weekend because there's all race photos i saw that yeah. you had some, and i forgot I, you had weight on and i uh or and with I, the Gene Winfield picture. Oh, no. I was talking about from the race this weekend, the picture. I'm jumping, and then my beard's, like, over here like this in the background. And it's like, <laughs> and it's like it almost makes you notice that I'm not getting ready to case that jump. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm getting ready to hit it way too early. Uh, come on. Where are you at? So oh. he did his version of a modern uh, That's F- rad. FX, and it's just it's yeah. a simple bike, man. Yeah. But it's it's a brand new lowrider S, yep. and you no, see how he, he made all this shit to make yep. it look like it came out in ninety one. It's called. Do you know whose bike I didn't think I was gonna like, and then when I saw it is that one Hoffman did. 
Which one? The, the uh, blue one? Yeah, the, the long one. Yeah, the long one. Yeah, I shot a couple of pictures. Yeah, of I, I didn't think I was going to like that bike. And then when I saw it done, I was like, eh, that's pretty cool. I want to shoot that one. Too. I want to see how he looks riding it. Yeah. Because it's fucking out there, dude. Those pictures Jeremy's posting, those carbon parts that he just candied for that bike he's putting together, I can't wait. I want to shoot that one, too. That's the good thing with, like, anything Jer- Jeremy paints, I'm mm-hmm. expected to shoot it, so I get to shoot it. That's, like, yeah. good guys. Like, when I was under contract with PPG, there'd be all these great cars for, like, Sherwin or something like yeah. that. I wouldn't normally get to shoot them because, I mean, I could shoot them for a magazine. That didn't affect my contract. But if, like, I wa- the owner wanted me to shoot it and I gave them the pictures, they couldn't share it with the paint company. But now that I'm under contract... I can shoot whatever I want to, but that was a yeah. good thing with good guys is I could go, I could, <laughs> I'd go to the show and I'd be like, the car I really want to shoot would win something. So I get mm. to shoot that car. So nice. it's like, it's, it so worked. it's a loophole. Almost. And then somebody's paying me to do it. So it's like, I'm not just doing it cause I like it, you know? So yeah. And so like I said, I don't really know how that would work with motorcycles. Cause there's, there's, you know, like if you go to SEMA, yeah, maybe you can get full throttle yeah. to cut you a check for shooting things yeah. on full throttle, but then they're yeah. not SEMA uh, Sturgis. Yeah. But then I'm like, well, fuck, man, I want to come here and party. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, that's the thing why they should hire me because I don't want to party. I just oh. want to shoot bikes. So just bring me to shoot bikes and everybody can party. <laughs> I just want to be the guy out there drunk as fuck trying to get candids and shit. Like, oh, psh, it's all blurry. Yeah. It's art, man. Yeah, I know the last year I went to Daytona. I hate going to Daytona, though, to shoot. Because yeah. I went, and the one year I went, I found a closed dealership. And just had everybody meet me at the dealership, and I shot in front of garage doors the whole time I was there. So, like, all my stuff kind of looked the same, which most people's stuff in Dayton looks the same because it's yeah. shot on the intercoastal with the bridge in the background. Like, yeah, everybody yeah. takes that same picture. But that's what's cool with when I work for good guys is if I'm going a certain direction and the car's that way, I don't have to shoot at the show. Mm. I can go to that guy's spot and find some cool place find to shoot Find something it. cool, yeah. Yeah, because they're actually on the newsstand now with their magazine, the Gazette. So, so I you thought could, you said it used to be a, a, a private publication, right? Yeah, For, well, you had to be a member to get the magazine, mm-hmm. you know, of, of good guys. And now, starting this year, they put it on the newsstand, mm-hmm. whereas all the other really good car magazines are all subscription-based now. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you can't find them on the newsstand. They're subscription-based. But you, Good Guys Gazette, you can find on the newsstand. I think they're doing uh, – they even got into Pilot and Flying J, like how oh, they have shit, those magazine racks. So I think yeah. they're into those now, too, so – See, that's what we were kind of talking about earlier, but with, like, some of the new motorcycle-centric magazines, like, I think Meta was one of them. Yeah. Like, the, all the photography is great in these yeah. things, but, like, the content is, like, none yeah. of us r- ride these bikes. Yeah, like, yeah. who yeah. the fuck rides a Well, scooter? that's what happens is sometimes the art doesn't match the, the scene real world, or the real world, you know? Yeah, it's like, oh. Well, it's, it's even the same as seeing, like, a Riddler car. Like, you see it up in the air, tilted at an angle. Like, that car is not meant to be driven on the highway. You know? It's like Dice is one of my favorite magazines. Oh yeah, Dice is always killed. And uh, you get in here and you start looking at some of the shit that they're they're show. Oh, that's yeah. By the yeah, way. pretty proud of that. Nice. Uh, but you start looking at some of the um, the shit in here, like, what the fuck has this got to do with motorcycles, yeah. man? Well, that's the thing. Is sometimes you there's a scooter gang in one of these things. I'm trying to find. Yeah. It. Well, that's the thing. Is sometimes you go too far in the art that you can't even see the motorcycle. Oh yeah. It's kind of like watching a commercial and you don't know what it's for. Yeah. And you're like, I just watched this for 30 seconds. I don't know what they're selling me. <laughs> you know, and, that, and the magazines get the same way. It's like, like the motorcycle's over here, and then there's, like, here's a donkey or something walking off in the desert. And it's like, well, is this a donkey magazine? And Johnny Depp this? shows up. Yeah. He picks oh, up sand and drops oh, it. Oh, did you see that commercial? <laughs> Holy cow. I feel like I just saw it last night. I yeah. think the football game he played it. Yeah, it's like, I, I saw it for the first time like a couple weeks ago. So he must be having on heavy rotation now or something. Because, dude, like he even there's one part where he picks up the sand too and throws it and it's yeah. like lands on him. I'm like, yeah. Now you got sand oh, in you. I think he dug and went, oh, yeah, it went he right over. It right into it. <laughs> and it's supposed to go over his shoulder, but it's like all on him. Yeah, and they, they yeah. aired it. It's just like, fuck it, run with it. Yeah. We had a, Johnny Depp. And someone okay. probably got paid like $4 million to make that commercial. Yeah. You know? That's crazy. Yeah. RIP. Yeah, that's crazy. It's been, I don't know. Do you ever look at the film world at all and like, man, it'd be fun to make that type of shit? And, uh, and, uh, a lot of times I'll look at the film. Um, oh, you mean film like taking pictures film? No, no, no. Oh, like like, uh, movie like creating film. documentary type things, commercial type things, like anything a little bit above what we do on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, I, I look at it, but then sometimes I look at it and I just feel like it's pretentious. You know, like it's, like I watched one the other day. I really don't was, know what that word means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping I could say it and people would think I thought I knew what I was like saying. Like, I think I have a, a, a roundabout idea what it means, but as far as a f- for sure definition. It means that when you look at it, it just kind of makes you roll your eyes and go, ugh. 
It's like egotistical. <laughs> They're doing yeah. it for their own purposes. Because they call, yeah. to like they say, like their... Texans call Dallas pretentious. Yeah. That's our thing. Like Austin's weird, mm. Houston's hood, Dallas yeah. is pretentious. Yeah. yeah. So it's just an egotistical thing. Yeah. Like They're full of themselves. Well, that's the thing is I think it comes back down to that whole, like you do it more for the art than the actual, the subject, mm-hmm. you know, and it's. You know what I like? The reason why I really want to get into video is is the same reason why, like, we, we try to host all these events and we try to. Yeah. I love it when I've, I love what I do and I love the world that I live in that, that I kind of created. Yeah. And when you show people this shit's rad and they start doing yeah. it, and they're like, yeah, dude, you're, you're right. This shit was bad. Well, badass. that's the thing. I, I guess the better word for them pretentious would be to say stuffy. Like, yeah. it just seems way too serious for what you're showing. Mm. You know, because like someone's showing a bag truck or a crazy painted motorcycle, and it's just like this super cinematic music, and it's like, la, 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 la. And it's like, yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. I want, yeah. I want the cinematic quality. But that's what like, I ran into with what, watching photographers is it was just, it didn't seem fun. Yeah. And what we do is fun, you know, and it's like, I want to show you the fun. I'm having fun. I'm not just yeah. doing this because this is all, I mean, it is all I can do, but <laughs> I don't, I don't want you to look at like, I'm only doing this because that's all I can do. I do this because it's my choice. It's that exact reason yeah. why I want to show people the type of way that we ride across country, the type right. of way we act as bikers, because yeah. so many people are used to their local bike scene being full of dudes that are standoffish yep. and, and got too many rings on their fingers and yeah. like, you know. Mm-hmm all this protocol, you know, not yeah. even bike clubs, but just in general. Well, you get that in the car scene too, because you get, you know, you get what they call the gold chainers, the guys with just money and not really any style, um, you know, yeah. like they basically paid somebody for their style, like paid someone to build something. That's what they would build, you know? Yeah, so yeah. you're basically, Hey, this is my A car. Customer. Yeah. Yeah. But they're, but they're playing it off. So like, they're like the big wheel bagger guys. Yeah. Of, okay. Well, even like getting a crazy paint job, like the guy who rides that bike with a crazy paint job probably doesn't know hardly anything about that paint job. Right. But he gets all the attention because of that paint job, you know? Yeah, well, I think that was probably a thing. I think nowadays, like, it's probably different with social media and stuff because, yeah, it you know, definitely is. I, I mean, like, I got a buddy now that, like, keeps sending me his how many followers he's been getting since I've been posting his pictures, <laughs> Yeah, you know, like, and it's one of those things, like, yeah, like, now you, you you know. Well, that's my hard part is I hate promoting myself. Yeah. Like, it seems like every photographer I know that in the automotive scene lately, I get a sponsored post from them on Instagram. Yeah. And I'm like, I've never sponsored anything. I don't anything. Do that either, man. But it's like. Because I don't really, I don't have anything to sell anybody. Like, And then also, too, why is it so bad that they're trying to promote them to me that does the same thing they do? Well, I don't think that they're doing I think it's just because I'm into cars. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's like so it's it picking, up, like, people that are in the demographic yeah. that they yeah. choose. Have you ever looked at, like, sponsoring a post? No. It asks you a lot of questions. So, basically, yeah. you're describing yourself. Yeah, you yourself, can pick the age groups. And, and all, all of a sudden, you just sponsored all your friends that already know yeah. who the fuck you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I... Like I've done, I've paid to sponsor the podcast a couple of times as far as like a, like a post about it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I couldn't tell you that it, it, I I saw a difference. You know what I mean? It's, I just don't like doing it. I I think that it's okay. One thing I do don't do not like is that when I see someone's social media, like a bike shop and every post they put out has a little Mm -hmm. tag to buy something that they sell. Oh yeah. They never put any content out that actually is represent representing who they are as a brand. Well, that's even you get, you even get the influencers or like every picture, you go to a cool picture, then you look at the, what it writes and it's like every, they're selling you something. Yeah. And that's the same. That's what I hate most about people stealing my photos is like, even if they credit me on it, it's like, you got to go way down on this post. that's this long. Oh, here I am down here. But over here, it's like, follow this person, follow this person. Hey, buy this, do this. And I'm like, well, Back in the day, if a company would have taken my photo and printed it and tried to sell something without paying me for it, I could sue them. But you can't sue those people. Mm. You know, they're doing the exact same thing because they're right. making themselves a company. They're trying to make profit off of something they didn't do. Yeah. And I don't think people and and today's generation just don't understand that. You know, it, it's a it's a slippery slope though because, because it's a hustle, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, right now, like especially hashtags was the original way how you could really get exposure yeah. on your images. And now your hashtags don't work because of the election. Exactly. And and, it, and election's over. And they still haven't listened but to the history. Everything's but. still fake news, though, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so with that going on, like, now it's kind of you rely on repost yeah. pages. Like, people yeah. that repost, 
like whether it's a car company, yeah. a photography company, or whatever, to get your image to massive people, you yeah. know. But it does suck whenever, you know, you get a repost from. I it's like the higher the the followers that that, that I get from a repost page, the less likes I get out of it. Yeah. Like I get people with five hundred thousand followers. And then they'll repost my image and it gets 30 likes. And I'm like, damn, how many of those you buy? Yeah. Well, I get the same thing. Like, I, I'll, I'll have, there'll be pages with like a million people on it and they'll post one of my images and I get like no followers when they post it. And I'm like, well, so what are those million followers really doing? I should have at least got one. I should have at least got one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I know what you mean, man. It's, yeah. it's a weird one. Like, but I don't want those followers anyway for the yeah. most part. I want car people, you know? Yeah. And the same thing, like, uh, I've been kind of, in a weird place with that, that page that I got for photography is like, man, like it's so easy to post these pictures and, and lean towards the bike world. Because as soon as I post a picture of my wife or a model, it's going to fall flat on its face because my audience is all bikes. Just like my actual, you'd be surprised. So, yeah, I mean, it's weird. Well, I did take a picture of our buddy Larry with his shirt out (laughs) at Sturgis and it didn't go that far. Yeah. I love the photo. He probably got, he I probably got reported. Photo. Yeah. That photo <laughs> I might have reported it. Nudity. Yeah. <laughs> this is disturbing. I need to report report this. No, but that that stuff is, I mean, like I said, I I, I think it, in the same way, like I, I'm like you when it comes to photography, just creating things yep. and trying to bring people together. Like I don't know how to do it and make money, and I yep. kind of don't want to. Well, uh, I mean, you need you just need to – the hard part is just finding your style. Yeah. Because it's so hard because, like, everything's pretty much been done. You know, but the cool thing, and then to do stuff that hasn't been done, you need to be really good at digital, mm-hmm. you know? So that's the thing is like, I'm, I have stuff in my head. Like I, I'd love to shoot a car on the moon, but then like people post pictures of a car on the moon, like, well, it was never there. They're just good at Photoshop, you know? Yeah. And it's just, some people are good at that. And it's like, but I don't really want to do that, you know? Well, you know, uh, a lot of times recently, and they're even becoming even more easier now with like Photoshop and all the new yeah. stuff they got. But like. You'd get, like, someone to do a cornfield and take a picture of a road glide, and it looks good, and then yeah. they'll fucking, you know, uh, screen, they'll do a fucking sky swap, and oh, the yeah. next thing you know, it's the Milky Way. Wait, I'm like, well, that's the thing is the AI on Photoshop now on the new release, it's yeah. like, it's just replace the sky, and it's like it comes with clouds. It's yeah, like, it's got all kinds of different shit. And it looks legit. Yeah, you know? seamless. So yeah. I remember when I first got into uh, Photoshop, and it's probably been 10 years ago, but that was the, the one thing you learned was replace the sky. So it was like, all you would do is walk around half the day taking pictures of clouds. And like, oh, this sunset's nice. And then you'd use it in some other picture later. And then they go back and look at those pictures five years later. And you're like, ugh. That yeah. doesn't, does not, none of that light the, matches. None of it matches. Yeah. yeah. So it's, um, yeah. So that, that, those get, and I think it got blown out just because of all the people out there trying to do the Milky Way shots. Yeah. And, and you, you know, you, I've watched videos of how they capture those. They'll shoot those like you're doing with yours. Oh, yeah. Like you'll set up the the thing. You'll get that that shed. Yeah. And then you'll let that way you have it all exposed in the light. And then you'll come back and wait for that stars. Then you'll yep. do it again and mesh. Well, it's funny because every time stuff like that gets popular, my wife's like, "Why don't you do some of that?" And I'm like, "Cause everybody else is doing it." Like, how do you even yeah. sell that shit though? Yeah. Well, it's if you're in like all that stuff's get. I don't even know if it gets sold. But, like, all the adventure companies use that stuff, you know, and it's just not really my market. But it's, like, no one in the hot rod industry is yeah. really using that, you know. I mean, but so, there's a lot of cool car pictures like that where it's, like, you know, because it'll have that nice black sheen to everything. Like, it'll be a black car with a black road and a black sky with perfect. And it's, like, yeah, that's just all cgi It's not, mm-hmm. you know, that didn't actually happen. And there's just a lot of that, you know. Have you had any, like, desire to shoot other things? Other than the cars and stuff lately, or just cars and, other and people, things? yeah. Just, and it's just the people who build stuff. It's like, but I'm lucky enough that I have enough work that I don't have to shoot other stuff. Mm. That's the thing is, I shoot what I want to shoot, you know. And it's like, and if I won the lottery, I'd probably do the exact same thing, live in the same van I live in. Mm-hmm. I'd shoot this exact same camera I shoot, and uh, but I just wouldn't have to charge people, and it'd be great. I'd just basically do the same thing i'm now i'm like i'm gonna go to this shop i'm gonna go to this shop i want to shoot this i want to shoot that mm-hmm. and then I, I joked with somebody if i'd have won the lottery that was like almost a billion dollars they'd be like how much is it to close this road i want to shoot a car here <laughs> like like they always do that commercial shooting on the bridge outside of dallas like they'll shut that bridge down let people yeah. shoot on it and it's like i'd be like oh yeah we're gonna close this bridge today but that's all the cool stuff, the old car stuff, is they used to buy permits in L.A. to shut down pieces of the road to shoot cars and drag cars on the 405. And I wonder what it cost to shut down the Aqueduct Bridge oh, in probably Dallas. Oh, it would probably be expensive. And nobody uses it. I know. Uh, that one with all the 
expansions and stuff on. I know like Nissan or somebody closed it down for like an early morning photo shoot, commercial shoot for one of their ads or something not too long ago. Yeah. But I guarantee it ain't cheap. We, I mean, we, I love riding around Dallas in the nighttime because we Dallas have a, has Dallas is one of the most beautiful towns at night. Yeah, that in Pittsburgh. Like, if you ever get a chance to go to Pittsburgh and you go through the tunnel and into the town of Pittsburgh, it's I well, even going into Vegas at night. Yeah, Vegas. You know, is I mean, you come up, you come up over the hill. There's and no lights, and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, yeah. I think that's why you came in. I was telling you, like, watch, wait, no, next yeah, because you hill. Come, next hill. This hill, and the only thing that sucks hill. about it is if you come through at night, you miss that amazing view of going up the hill coming from the dam. Yeah, like you miss all that. So you we, know. Know that. there's a yeah. picture. That picture. Yep. That's a lake dry. It's like a dry lake bed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. Uh, where they shoot all the cars. Is that where it's at? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's I was, dude, I've ridden by the thing a million fucking times. I'm oh, like, yeah. I didn't even know it was here. Yeah. So now I'm like waiting to go back there so we can do a photo shoot. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be high noon. It's going to be the worst time. High noon. That was actually <laughs> then when they shot that. So I shoot so much stuff at high noon and people are like, oh, was that sunset? I was like, no, I shot that at like 12.03. Yeah. Because you basically, as a commercial photographer, shoots cars and motorcycles. You always, A lot of times you just can't say, all right, 545, we're shooting here. It's yeah. like you show up to a big company and they're like, we're open from 9 to 3. Yeah. So you have yeah. from 9 to 3 to shoot this stuff. So like last night, so I worked yesterday yeah. here and I'm like, all right, I want to get off. I want to be done here. By 3.30, I want to go home, get on my bike, uh, get on my camera shit. And I got an area I want to go scout to shoot. Yep. By the time I got there, and I sat in one spot, and uh, it was it was already – I was already losing light to, yep. to shoot anything, and it wasn't quite right. But I saw a couple areas that I could probably ride to to get the Dallas skyline. Yep. The hard thing about getting pictures of the Dallas skyline is, you know, we have the river right there with the right. high banks. Yep. And so there's a certain – a couple areas that you can get where you're – you, like say a bike is higher than the banks and yeah. you can get a good shot of the downtown skyline. Yeah. We have a jail house that's right there in the middle of the skyline that nice. fucks everything up. <laughs> and it's like, it's not lit up, but it's yeah. big. And it's like, you, you have to find it like a perspective, like drone shots are perfect. Cause yeah. you can get it from above, but you ain't going to get a good shot of your bike with the skyline behind it. Right. And, um, I've been, I, I go through phases with lenses, what I like to shoot with. And so, when I first got my 70 to 200, I'm like, this is all I want. Yeah. Everything's going 200, yeah. you know? And then, then I've now met a, f- a place where like, I know where I want to use a 200 at. Right. Right. I know wh- like the, 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 the area. And then I just got out of a phase of shooting everything at like 24 yep. millimeter where yep. I was like, okay, I fucking well, love this. Well, that's the good thing. thing with the Canon and Icon stuff is you get that 24 to 70 to eight, then you get the 70 to 200 to eight. And those lenses are so good, like, you never have to take them off. Like, when I when I shot Nikon for, like, six months or something, I, I used their 24 to 70 to 8, and I mm. never took the lens off. Yeah. Like, I shot everything with a 24 to 70 to 8. And now I was... It's a $3,000 lens, I yeah, think. Yeah, I... So, the... I shoot basically almost all primes oh, on you do? the medium format, but they have some really good zooms. Like, they have a 32 to 64, and then they have... I just got a 100 to 200. And uh, I've used that 100 to 200 a lot lately. And I usually don't do that whole – because I like a little wide. Like, I I want a little bit of the background and stuff like that in my pictures. And I don't normally do that one where the background just kind of – you know, like when you shoot that 200 millimeter where everything is just kind of flat. Right there, yeah. You know, because I still feel like it's a little flat. But it looks really great if you light paint or, you know, that way you can still put depth to it. And, uh, but I've been using that 100 to 200 a lot lately. And I didn't, I I got it thinking I needed it for autocross, you know, later on next year or races Mm -hmm. next year. And then I've used it a lot lately. Yeah. And it's such a good lens. And that's the thing with the Fuji stuff or the medium format stuff is like a lot of stuff says like an F4, but F4 falls off so fast on medium format that it's like, it's like having a A 2.0 or something like that. So it's, I, I got that lens. At for a camp out because yep. I wanted to walk around and be able to get shots of people being normal. Is that the 70 to 200? Yeah, yeah without feeling like I was yep. riding their shit. Yep. And um, I love that lens. It, that's the L one too, isn't it? Yeah, all my yeah. shit's L, buddy. Yeah, that's the that's that's the thing is like if you're going to – well, that's the thing. If you're going to do it, you need to – I mean, why waste the money? Because it's, it's just like buying car stuff is you can buy the cheaper stuff, mm-hmm. but you're going to buy three of them. So know? I bought all these lenses, even that – I bought that 50 mil that's in the box, and I just put it on fucking Facebook because yeah. I bought it, and I shot it once. I, I just don't shoot. My camera guy that's in Indianapolis now that used to work at that shop in Nashville, when that right before I sold all my Nikon stuff, um, 
he hooked me up with one of the new Tamron lenses. And it's crazy how, I mean, they're still expensive, but they're half the money of, of the yeah, Canon and Nikon exactly. stuff. And it's like, even that stuff, the Sigmas and the Tamrons, like those lenses are getting so good now. Yeah. I remember they used to not be as sharp and now yeah. they're going to get that take. What I love about the L series lenses is they're sharp. And that's yeah. one thing on my old camera that, that I, you still have that one or? I actually just sold it uh, last week. The Trent buy it? No. I, some, this lady on Facebook. Yeah, so I was shooting that. It was a Nikon D72 D7 crop sensor. Yep. Uh, but every time I would shoot and I'd pull it up on the screen, I'm like, man, this fucking shit is not sharp. Yep. And so my phone was doing better, so I stopped using that. Yep. Yeah, but I, 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 I ran into the same issue. It's kind of why I was like, I want to get rid of it. Yep. Uh, and it sucks that we're sitting here doing a like a photography podcast. I'm like, fuck, man, I want to go take pictures now. But, you know, yeah. Christmas time. I feel sorry for some of the people who normally listen. They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to hear about bikes. And it's like, these oh. nerds are talking about pixels. Yeah. <laughs> well, pixels. The, you know, I've had a couple Mega of friends. Pistols. Yeah. A couple of friends that's been reaching out about wanting to get into photography. And yeah. I think it's dope. But I, I, I try to tell them, like, look, man, like, it, if I would have bought a full frame from Jump Street, I probably would have stuck with this a long time oh, ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. That full frame stuff is yeah, so good. Yeah, because it's going to be so much of a jump from your phone to where it's yeah. like you don't feel like you're. While you're trying to learn how to edit and learn how to expose well, things correctly. Well, even the uh, the small APS-C stuff from Fuji that looks like they still like old film cameras. So, like, I, I get people. Like, I just sent my mom. I used to have this little X-T2 they had. And so when I bought the new camera and I used my other medium format as the backup, my mom, like, actually texted me two days after that and goes, think about buying a new camera. So I'm like, well, I know where this is going. Yeah. So I sent it to her, and it's cool because I remember I wouldn't be into photography one for her, but it's like all the old Canon AE-1 film cameras. Like, the, their stuff looks just like those, but they're digital. And it's like if you walk around with it, people think you're shooting film. That's how cool the stuff looks. Mm -hmm. And they have great lenses, but everything's, like, this big. Yeah. You know, like, and it's all interchangeable lens stuff. All that mirrorless stuff is just so nice. Because I remember so I was... That takes, like, good photos, though? Oh, yeah, it takes excellent. It's like a 20... It's 24 megapixel, like, legit sensor. And it. And I was walking around... I used to use it for show coverage, and I was walking around Syracuse with it at the Syracuse Nationals one year. And there's one of those guys. He's got, like, one camera on this side with a 70 to 200. And he's got this one over here. And then he's got another one around his neck. And he's got the big, like, Chinese hat and then he's got a vest on and i'm just walking around with this little camera and i was like i was like hey could you move over just a little bit so i can take a picture of this car <laughs> and the guy's like and the guy just kind of rolled his eyes at me and walked over and then he was talking to these other people who owned the car next to the one i was taking a picture of and he goes everybody gets a camera and they think they're a photographer and then my buddy was standing there is like you should tell him who you are and i'm like it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. but it's just like i don't ever want to be that guy yeah you yeah. know because everybody laughs like they never see me with a camera yeah, yeah, you know, unless you see me at Good Guys and I'm working, and then half the time Good Guys doesn't bring me in to shoot car show pictures. Yeah. They bring me in to shoot. So when you were at Yellowstone this year, were y'all taking pictures at all there? Or? Um, I shot them all with my cell phone. <laughs> Dude, we rode through there. Yeah. Uh, anytime there's a wild animal close to the yep. road, the lenses that get pulled out of people's cars is oh, like yeah. that fucking gun Ooh. on the first Batman. <laughs> oh well, we had one. We um, we went out to where the. Um, there's like the campgrounds, not where Old Faithful is, but that next little area where there's the campground and there's like a like a little restaurants and stuff. And then you turn right and there's the two falls there. But we turned right there and all of a sudden traffic is a dead stop and there's a herd of elk there. And it's like people are out there with like cannons. Yeah. And like just massive lenses. And I'm like, I don't even have. You, you know, know what's crazy? So they're all lined up on the road and they were yeah. pulling those lenses. Like yeah. how the fuck are you getting a good shot? Yeah. Like, how can you just hanging out the window or standing on top yeah. of your car yeah. with this fucking, Oh, I know. You know. It's, it's crazy. It's, but that's the thing is it, people buy that stuff and still take snapshots. <laughs> you that know, I true. mean, that's, that's the crazy part. Like, you that's buy what it I think. See, and I think like that. that's an issue that I had, too, is yeah. it's like I, I got a camera. I was, just, it was like taking pictures of my bike like I would take it with a cell phone yeah. and like of people like I would take it with but a cell phone. But I do phone. believe that everybody should take pictures because I everybody cool. sees everything different. Yeah, it's and cool. It, and everybody should have memories. Yeah. You know, so what, I mean, would you, what would you say to somebody who, who like say they listen to this podcast and they've been thinking for a minute about getting into photography, like what camera should they start with? Like, Well, you want to buy the best you can afford. But the thing is, is you want lenses. Yeah. You know, I mean, the bodies are interchangeable, you know, mm -hmm. like they, yeah. they age, you know, and the lenses um, are pretty solid, yeah. Yeah. but the lens is solid. And to get like your L glass or my medium format glass for my Fuji, you're spending 
couple grand, unless you can get it used, yeah. you know, and there is a really good used market for lenses, you know, but then you have to worry about did someone drop it before they sold it to you and stuff right. like that. So, yeah, so you, yeah. And I, mean, I always recommend I buying, bought that one lo- used. Yeah. So. I bought, um, B and H the big yeah. deal that I always try to buy from brick and mortar and they actually do have a brick and mortar. Yeah. Up so in New York, I think, yeah, yeah. Them and Adorama are both in New York city and they're not too far away from each other, but they had an open box on the 32 to 64 that I bought. And so that was like $3,000 at the time. And they had it for like 1700 bucks. Oh, and I was shit. like, wow, that's I a good just open like, box. I was, I was like, like 40 bucks off. And it was just a demo from, you know, on the floor. And then of course, Fuji full warranty is it the demos. Yeah. So I just like, I had to call my buddy Nick. And I'm like, hey, just so you know, I'm going to buy this lens and not buy it from you. And I was like, he goes, I don't blame you. I'd buy it. Well, at first I asked him, I was like, hey, this lens for 1700 bucks, is that a good deal? Mm-hmm. And he goes, and I think the cheapest of time he get it for me was like 2200 or something like yeah. that. And he's like, yeah, dude, I'd buy it. You see, what I ran into, because I, when I bought the uh, 6D Mark II, yep. um, just being a full frame camera, had an EF mount. So yep. I started buying EF mount lenses. Yep. The That's best. the only thing I've ever had against Canon, which I've never shot Canon, uh, but... The cool thing with Nikon is like all their lenses bolt to all all their old lenses bolt to, bolt to the new cameras. I think the you new know? Z, the well, new Z stuff is doesn't. The, so the yeah. same thing. I got the new mirrorless yeah. R series, but they came, it came with an adapter though, didn't it? It didn't come with an adapter. I bought one, but the adapter works just fine. Yeah. Well, I, well, I thought that I heard on one of the podcasts, one of those nerd photography podcasts like this one, <laughs> that they were going to start including it with. Maybe they just did it for a few packages. They or probably did it. it at the beginning. I yeah. bought mine when they they lowered the price from like twenty four hundred bucks. No, that's probably what they just did. Then, so, so they were about to release yeah. the R five, and yep. so they they lowered the 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 five D Mark three, which just came out. Yeah. And the Canon EOS R down. Well, to that's like, the thing is when Canon came out with that 5D. I mean, it's just like it re redid the world of digital photography, you know. And I never really liked it because every time I shot one, it just felt like a piece of plastic. Yeah. Like I like to have some heft in my hand when I shoot a camera. It's like it's like if someone gave you a plastic gun and you shot a real gun, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just like. One See, of I was I was on the fence because I had enough money to buy a used uh, 1DX Mark II, which yeah. is their flagship camera, yeah. or the EOS R. Well, that's what's tough too is like you don't Staying. know if this is what you want to do, and it's like you well, want to make. For me, a, it's easier because I do know that it helps do everything yeah, I'm doing. Well. But so if I'm like, if you're just dipping your toes in the water, wanting to see about doing this shit, yeah. then it would be hard. Like that's why I think that 60 Mark II is a great camera. Yeah. Because you can find it on the used market with the lens for about a thousand bucks. Yeah, that's that's the thing. And then the kit lenses are getting better now too. Yeah. And it's like I know that Nikon at one time had a eighty to two hundred or something like that that came that they had. And it was just it was less than a thousand dollars. But it was like an F five six or something. Mm-hmm. But like you if you walked around a car show, you never had to take that lens off. Yeah. Like you could shoot anything you had to shoot at the show, you could shoot with that lens. Mm. You know, so I mean it's I think convenience is probably the Best thing, but stuff is so good now, you know, like even the, you, it's just like, there's really no junk, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there's, I mean, there's junk, but if you're spending a certain amount, you're not getting junk. I mean, it's all good. And it's the other thing I do, do you do everything through like Photoshop and Lightroom? I use capture one now because of the sensors and the Fujis, uh, capture one actually renders it better than, but I still use Photoshop. So I basically, everything I was doing, I was, I used to use. I never used Lightroom, but Camera Raw was Lightroom before Lightroom. So yeah. I always use Camera Raw into Photoshop. And then when I got the new camera, everybody at Fuji was like, hey, you need to switch to Capture One. So, like, for four days, I'm like, it ain't going to work. I can't teach an old dog new tricks. And on yeah. the fifth day, I was like, oh, like light bulb. And it was like, it was like I always used it. And it actually made everything faster. Mm. And uh, But it was just sitting with it for four days. Like, there, it does the same thing like Lightroom does where it makes catalogs. And like I just deleted the catalog, and I was like, "Where my? F- All my work was in here, and now it's not there anymore." Yeah. So I like I, there was a couple of times I just restarted from scratch in the first three days. I'm like, delete everything, start again, you know. So it was like, yeah, because I, I mean I do. When people ask me, I was like, you know, if you even just get the, uh, you can't do the camera thing yet, but you yeah. have a cell phone. Yep. If you do like the Adobe Cloud thing, like the Photoshop Lightroom, and you get it, you know, it's like $14 a month, and yep. you're getting it on your PC, your phone, everything, you can start playing with oh, the yeah. editing process. Well, that's the thing. Like we said earlier, you can just move sliders. Yeah. And you're not destroying the image, you know? And that's the way I like about Capture One is like there's a lot of small adjustments I got to make. Like 
bring up a wheel a little bit or take down something. And it has built-in masking where mm-hmm. you just draw a mask on it right in Capture One, which yeah. is basically like your RAW. And it's like the tools are really great. Mm. So when I use it, it actually makes my workflow faster because normally I would do it, put it into Photoshop, dodge and burn, bring it back out. And now I just do it. I can do all my dodge and burn right in Capture One. Yeah. And so I'm still learning dodge and burn right now. Yeah. I, that's why I ended up buying the Wacom pad yeah. and things like their tablet or whatever the fuck it's called. That way I can kind of, with a pin, start you know, bring in highlights. Well, there's some, and things there's like some that. super great tutorial pages. Like, uh, Ben Wilmore is one of my favorite instructors and, uh, but he's super technical. Mm-hmm. Like he's a little over my head, but, uh, I think my phone's telling me to go to bed, <laughs> but, man. but, uh, he's super over my head, but like anytime I have a question on a tool or a color balance issue or something like that, like his stuff is spot on. Mm-hmm. Then there's creative live, which has a lot of cool stuff in it. I finally, I subscribed to him this year because I watched something, whether it's YouTube or Creative Live or Kelby One or Ben Wilmore or Dave Black or Joel Grimes. I watch something every day. Mm-hmm. And it's like, even if it has nothing to do with what I do, I like, I finally stopped watching a lot of the landscape stuff because it's all, yeah. hey, get an ND filter. And, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, yeah. this. Well, that's what I do too, man. Even if I'm yeah. not physically watching it, but it, yeah. the TV running and, and watching these different pages. Yeah. that are I fell asleep on uh, Creative Live last night. I'm laying in bed listening to the lady talk about how to get more YouTube followers. <laughs> and I'm just like, and basically it's like, you got to find your niche and do something nobody else is doing and show what you're doing. I'm like, oh, I'm doing all that stuff. I'm going to sleep now. <laughs> so it's like. I get roped up into those, like how to grow your Instagram yeah. organically. And it's like, I'm already doing all that shit. I started, I went down that when I first got on the YouTube channel, it's only been like, it's been with like within a month that I started doing it. I mean, I've been on there forever, but I just started making videos like in the last month. Mm-hmm. And so like, I start like, Oh, what podcasts are there for YouTube? And I was like, and then you realize like, Oh, these are just commercials to sell you a tube buddy or something like that. It's like, they're not even really telling you something. Yeah. And well, the YouTube stuff is, uh, it, like I said, it, it what happens is when you start looking at all the ways to grow your YouTube, you yeah. end up doing the same things everybody's doing. And oh, yeah. so everybody's like doing the thumbnail the same way. Yeah. Everybody's doing the intro after the this and they're. Well, the bad thing is a lot of it teaches you. So like I'm like into big. cars and motorcycles and all that stuff. And that's what I want to show you in photography. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the stuff's geared toward see what hashtags are trending and make a video of that. Like that's not even well. You know, one you thing know. I also learned. I was I was listening to another photographer talk to me. I don't remember who it was, but it was this year, and he was like, "Think about how lucky you are that you are into photography and you have content to shoot." Yep. Like, how many dudes are out there walking around at looking at flower beds and fucking ladybugs and well, trying that's to like do everybody macro. there for a while. The hot thing was that three sixty five project. Take a picture every day, which is cool. Until you get halfway through and you're like, it becomes a chore because you have to take a picture every day. So you're just mailing it in, Mm -hmm. you know. I would much rather see someone do Project 52 and take one really great photo a week. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I mean, it's it makes more sense. It's like you shouldn't be taking a picture just because I have to take a picture. I what I I also I'm a firm believer in the whole concept of uh, putting 10,000 hours into oh yeah stuff yeah and I think it also applies to you know fuck put a hundred thousand clicks you know on a camera well that's even that's even the same thing when i'll show up to do a shoot and then somebody's like hey can i tag along and watch i'm like you're probably not gonna learn anything yeah i'm like because i'll go set lights up and half the time i'm looking down the side of the car see if i can see my light stand and my light in the reflection because then you know you're gonna have a hot spot and then but you i've got 20 years of lighting cars Mm -hmm. so when Half the time I set my stuff up. I, I might have done it with you that one night. I set stuff up and take a picture, and I'm like, got it. <laughs> you know, yeah. just as a joke, you know, it's like because you've done it so many times, yeah. like you know where to start for f stop and shutter speed and all that stuff, or how the light is. And because mm. a lot of times uh, they'll, they'll be pro photographers, they'll go and they'll be doing tutorials and they'll tape over their over the back of their screen and go, oh, yeah, we're gonna have a contest, so you can do this. Like, but if you've been doing it for 20 years, you really don't need the screen, you know, you're going you're gonna be. You'll be there. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, that's the thing. Trying to figure it out, you know, I, I'm, it's fun, man. Like, yeah. but also, but it's still a side gig for me. So it's yeah. like, you know, you're trying to wake up. And what I end up doing is like, I'm here working. Yeah. Wanting to go shoot. Yeah. And then I go shoot and then it's dark. Yeah. And then I don't really have anything to shoot after dark. And yeah. then so I go home and I watch, I lay in bed, watch YouTube videos. Yeah. And I'm like stoked because I'm gonna go shoot tomorrow after work. Yeah. And then I'm, it's like this perpetual. My wife cycle. laughs at me because I'll watch. I'll watch 
whatever the new cool TV series is, even if I don't like it because of color grading. Like you'll just look at the way the tones and the lighting and all that stuff. Cause everything's lit in the video. So like mm-hmm. if you're seeing it, it looks, looks like one of our photos, but it's video. It's like someone spent a lot of time lighting this, you mm-hmm. know? And it's like, that's what I like to see because that I actually, when I was 13, I helped at a post-production facility until I was 20 and mm-hmm. helped hang lights and do lighting and, you know, and do psych wall stuff and everything like that. So that's how I got into like and lighting and got taught how to see light, you know, I'm actually still trying to get lighting figured out in here. Yeah. Um, it's like, I love the red lights for just the way it feels like we're sitting here talking, but I don't really feel like it does much of anything for the cameras. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you like it, it, it's not, I haven't finished setting up the room so that everything feels like that YouTube studio. Like yeah, one day I'll get the little plaque that says, you'll just get like little, little thousand followers, little side thing here with like ring lights around the microphone. So you just have like a ring light with circle eyes and, (laughs) (laughs) but no, like I need to get a couple more of those to bring like a, yeah, a light. Well, what you probably want to do is get light in here where you can dim those top ones. So yeah, I have that. So we can, take it down but then I, I oh, yeah, but then you lose it for the video you know a little bit but that's what i'm saying is if you can get a little bit softer light like a yeah. big like even if you hung a big soft box across the top oh yeah you know then that maybe makes sense. you know but then you'd still need to reflect it in the face you know yeah shoot just, just mirror the table so like a big glass but yeah i thought about putting like having some of those type of lights that kind of hung down yep. from the ceiling and would because I don't want a harsh light from top, yeah. but maybe get it low enough to where it's almost hitting here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't want it straight way. in. You just want – because you don't want to be in someone's face anyway. Yeah. So. so that's why, I like, usually like that, just for the sake, I can stick it right there in between that crack, yep. lay it sideways. Well, those light sticks work really great, you know, because I've used them all the time where I just need it. Like, if I'm trying to shoot a wheel, I won't even strobe it. I'll just hold it up, <clears> and I'll set my shutter where I want it, and I'll take it because I can just move the light around to where yeah. I want it, you know. But, again, if – the whole reason I light stuff is because of metal flake. Mm-hmm. And it's like I spent my life trying to make flake look good. So that's why I strobe, st- strobe stuff a lot of times yeah. is because flake does like harsh light. You know, I don't even use soft boxes and stuff half the time. So. Yeah, even downstairs, like every time I shoot a helmet or a, a paint job, yeah. it's 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 like I'm, I'm doing these things. It, it's all practice for lighting, oh, right? Yeah. It's all practice. So how do I make this image fun to look at and – like, I, I shot a frame, and everything's real harsh on it, like, because yeah. I was trying to bring out the flake. Yeah. But at the same time, it um, it's not a great photo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's trial and error. Yeah, I saw that one. That one's fine. Which one is it? You just blew the, you blew the flake out in the tank, though. That's yeah. The, yeah. Well, I couldn't fit. I, but that I, what red, I did is I feel like I... The red is horrible. Yeah, I know? blew the flake out, but I also blew the silver leaf out in the in the rear fender. Yeah, but it's not... Here, let me see I saw it the other day. I actually, but it still shows what you did. For Instagram, I feel like it's I fine. I even like, I like your red light across the front of the frame on this too. I thought it turned out, I think this picture's fine. And you could have cloned out that, because you blew this red out. Mm-hmm. You could have just cloned that I white reflection. That. I'm going to I'm gonna show you one tool you tonight. You give a crash course. I'm just going to show you one tool tonight. I'll have you post that, pull that picture up and we'll fix it later. Okay. That's what I, I mean, it won't be fixed, but it'll, I'll yeah. show you. Yeah, like I said, those those kind of things are fun, and and even when I got that light, which that was a fucking like Thanksgiving Day purchase, I was yeah. sitting on the couch bored as fuck, and I'm like, oh, this is on sale for Black Friday, so yeah. bam, got no, it. No, those things are great. Uh, yeah, it's like even half if, my gym right now. It's funny if uh, that one I have. Sometimes I'm out like hooking up sewer hose with it mm. into my hand. It's like <laughs> I've used it for everything. But that's the thing, the Westcott one's like six hundred bucks. Yeah, you that know, one was that's a Godox. But, it was like two fifty. But the thing I'll. I stand behind it because I've had that thing for four or five years and it's been through hell and it still tra- takes a charge and it still always works. And it's mm-hmm. like, so as much as I go, holy cow, that's expensive. It's yeah. like, but well, lighting is not cheap, man. Yeah. Well, it, it's not plastic either. Like yeah. it, they didn't make it out of plastic. You know? So my next big purchase is for my camera shit is, uh, I want to get two good strobes. Yep. Um, and well, there's so much good stuff on that. I can, when you get ready to buy stuff, let me know. Yeah, that's, that's In my fact, I can probably hook you up with my buddy Nick that mm-hmm. works for Robert's mm-hmm. Camera, and they have a massively good used department. For real. And you can probably get some stuff. Well, so I, I looked into, like, the, uh, the original, which was, like, the aperture lighting, but yeah. that shit's so fucking expensive. Yeah, like, well, I shoot pro photo, so it's... In <laughs> fact, I should show you my new ones. Like, when I was here before, they were, like, this big. Mm-hmm. Well, now their B10 Pluses are this big. And mm-hmm. the battery's half the size it was before. They're super light. Yeah. And they're super, but you're also looking at like 2500 bucks a light, you know? 
Ouch. But <laughs> but they fire twenty yeah. or two hundred times a day. Yeah. You know, for you know, and I have them forever. Yeah, see, I'm not on your level of professionalism where wow. I'm doing this every day. You can't use that P word around me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably more professional than I am. Oh, but. definitely not. That's for sure. Uh, but no. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been looking into a couple different ones and getting some advice from people that, you know, like I probably am only going to use them twice a week. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, well, the thing is, too, when you get those lights is you can even use them as studio lights with the model lights, mm-hmm. you know, and get a couple of nice soft boxes and stuff with them. Because that's the cool thing now is, yeah, the lights have gotten expensive and then you can get cheap lights, but all the accessories have gotten cheap. And it's like I just bought – it's super massive and I don't even use it half the time, but I bought a one by four softbox or two by four mm-hmm. strip from pro photo. <laughs> and it's like this big when it opens up and it's just like a big massive softbox. So when I'm shooting engines, I can just stick it in the yeah. front engines, but you can do the exact same thing. And, um, you can, bu- when, once you get strobes, I'll come over and just show you some stuff and then we'll play with some of my accessories. Cause yeah. like you can buy an umbrella and then you can, Make it big, like a big light source, or you can bring the umbrella in. Like so, this I have, and like I said, uh, on the uh, this thing, I have all the stuff to softbox and umbrella for it. Yeah, this but I think we're talking different stuff. Though. This is tiny, though. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm now when you get when you get a legit strobe. Yeah, I'll uh, we'll we'll play with some stuff. In fact, I should probably just come in one day and you can play with some of my stuff. Yeah, you know, I love playing with your stuff. <laughs> Zing! <laughs> Hate it here. But yeah. Well, shit, man. We can wrap it up. We're oh, not going to do three hours a day. Oh, that's but fine. But we almost did. Oh, it's fine. I can yeah, we did it. two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, sweet. So cool. I could be like on the Joe Rogan when you see it's like a short one. You're like, oh, that guy must have just been selling something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'm the same way sometimes. Like you see uh, those hour, dude, 45 minute ones or you see of, the four Joe Rogan, man, I saw a fucking ad for Joe Rogan's podcast from Spotify today. Oh, yeah, I did, too. It I blew got my too. fucking mind. I'm like, why the fuck are you so advertising here's my, for this podcast? Here's my problem with the Spotify podcast. It's the video. Yeah. So on my head unit in the Sprinter van, whenever Google gives me a map direction, it cuts it off, and it doesn't start back up again. Mm. It's been doing that to me, too. Yeah, so I, they need to fix their interactivity with, you know, plugged in and playing yeah. through radios. Yeah. Because now, because now they've taken it completely off of YouTube. the podcast, the podcast. So I, I was trying to. So yeah, I used to watch um, Rogan on YouTube. Yeah. And now, okay, well, I want to see this new Rogan. Yeah. But when I bring Spotify up on my TV yeah. out there, it doesn't play video. Oh really? It only plays video on my phone and mm-hmm. tablet. Mm-hmm. That's silly. Yeah. So they kind of play themselves. Yeah. I, but I think that the I think Rogan's podcast and maybe another person's is all they're trying to open up the. The video format podcast yeah. for no, the I channel. totally get it because it is nice. Like if you want to sit and watch it, it's kind of cool. Yeah, you know, it'd be cool to have it up on the screen while you're listening to it. And like if, if like because when you pull stuff up, you like to see what they're pulling up. Yeah, so like you know? if I'm working right now, and then they say, you know, I've been listening to the same audio form for the whole time, and they yeah. say, all right, so yeah, no, check it, that that photo right there, and then I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, because okay. how many times are you like listening to do it on the podcast and you just start googling it? You're like, oh, yeah, I, I do that a lot. My wife would. <laughs> We would drive down the road and listen to it because I listen to it when I drive because there's three and a half hour, four hour podcasts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, this is like tank of gas. This will get me from here to my here next to, stop. Here to my next stop. Yeah. You know, so it's it's one of those ones where I like those long ones. And it's like, and it's, and to be honest with you, there's not a ton of really good podcasts that you can listen to for three hours. Yeah. And that's yeah. why, you know, Joe Rogan's like, he kind of comes in clutch with that whole thing. But yeah. then it's like, even when you get tired of that, now I just moved on to like audio books and shit. Yeah. You know, so I listen to books a lot. Lately. I did the, uh, I've done, I've listened to 30 audio books. Good. Well, that's what I was going like, to tell you a while ago too, when you were saying you're not quite sure what you want to do. And it's like, it doesn't suck to learn everything. Yeah, it's kind of, you what know, it's like, do. if you can learn something, learn something. Right. I mean, it's not going to hurt you to know something, <laughs> you yeah. know, it's just when you learn a little bit of something. I always make that joke because you have those people that know a lot about one thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm one of those ones that, like, I know a little bit about a lot of stuff, but I don't know a lot about one thing. Right. Because I'm sure there's other, there's super geeky photographers on here going, hey, that's not how that works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? We're actually uh, um, in works right now. I'm trying to put together a show for Texas-based motorcycle photographers. Oh, cool. Where... Basically, I'm going to get all the, the photographers that myself, uh, the Tim O'Keefe dude, and then the guys he knows and the guys yeah. that I know, yeah. and like do a, like a show slash party where it's like 
we have like we're gonna have I think the way we were talking about doing is having five categories or four categories nice. like bikes, the lifestyle models, like yeah. you know, riding. So it's yeah. like all right, uh, everybody puts a couple photos in each category. We'll group them on the wall, nice, and then everybody can kind of sell merch or prints cool. or whatever. But then there's beer. There's a couple rad bikes in there, awesome, and just kind of like a way to, I you know, now that I've been kind of pushing into the photography thing, I I. I in, in this space of the motorcycle world, yeah. everybody's stoked when the photographers go on the ride with them. Yeah. Everybody's stoked when there's a photographer at the stunt lot. Yeah. Everybody's stoked when the photographer's walking around giddy up with a camera. Yeah. Well, I saw it at the mountain bike race this weekend. It's like everybody on Facebook's like, oh, where's the bike? Where's the race pictures? I want to see the race pictures. And I'm right. like, I could care less. And it's like, because everybody's like, oh, you should get your camera and take pictures yeah. of people ride. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. But those dudes hauled their crap up and down the mountain all weekend. And I'm like... Good for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I definitely don't want to do that. I was like, because you guys, I mean, that's I don't want to haul 80 pounds of gear up and down a mountain. All yeah. Day so long. like, what what I what I was thinking is like, I think it'd be cool to have a party where it, it's and even if I don't, if I take myself out of the equation, it's just yep. for them. I think it would be really badass to uh, get people to come and party and meet these oh, yeah. guys and well, show them a little fucking love. Well, you even know? if you know, like, even the Lictor show is cool because of that because yeah. you know it shows different artwork and that's kind of where I would like to take like it. Like, like I want to start and with photography, and that's and, the cool thing is there's so much room for that. Yeah, you know, it's like you can't, you know, and and that's the thing too is like Lictor is a super cool dude on top of being who he is. Yeah, and he'd be the first one to help support you. You know, if you wanted mm-hmm. to do something like that, where he'd be like, "Yeah, we need more of this," mm-hmm. and really. It, the more people do it, the more it brings attention to his too, you know, because sure. everybody, that's the OG, you know. And that's the cool thing is there's too much of that deal where, like, everybody fights against everybody and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, but it's cool to get everybody together. And once you get everybody together, it's like, oh, we're not just on the Internet talking shit about each yeah. other. It's like, oh, that guy's actually a nice guy, you know. Yeah, every Facebook chat room in America is like that. <laughs> well, that's like I joined, I got invited, I was like, to a real high-end automotive photography one, and I'm like, oh, I guess I should do this because if someone has questions, I should, you know, I go on the Fuji pages with the medium, like the the GFX 100, so if people have questions and I've run into what they've done, you're like, oh, yeah, well, try this. Mm-hmm. But, like, I I got added to one, and someone posted that picture of the guy with the shotgun in the window and all this other stuff, and, like, somebody posts, this picture makes no sense, and it's distracting and all this other stuff, and then I shot that picture 12 years ago. <laughs> And then I look at the thing, and it's like he's 23 and he's an IT guy. I was like, he was 13 when I shot this picture, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, just take it with a grain of salt. And I just, like, left the group. And it's like, yeah, I just, just can't take it personal. That's like the one thing Rogan was talking about today was how he ghosts stuff. He posts it and leaves it. Doesn't even look Yeah, that's the best Like, way don't to even want to see the comments. And it's like, I can't do that with YouTube because people ask questions and stuff like that. But if someone's on there being an ass, it's just like, delete it. Yeah, you know? I try not to feed it. Fortunately, I don't get too much bullshit yeah. on well we also don't have three million followers with true. thirty thousand people make a comment trying to <laughs> you know one up us and, and so you know. uh what do you what do you think is a good like uh entry level oh yeah i didn't uh, uh, fuji film i did camera. not answer your question earlier did i no so they have a new awesome i'm gonna go get a x100 i think i don't know if i got signal because i just pulled them up right here I was, i'm seeing like xt30s yeah, that's the. I think that's they're the entry. Kind of, are they the entry because they, they go for about twelve hundred dollars new? Yeah, I, think. I would actually if you can get a good price on one, a used XT three. XT three. Yeah, because the XT four is the new one, and really the XT two is still good too. Yeah, I really like those, and uh, but the newer you get, the faster the focus and the better the focus is. Mm. So if you can get into a three, I'm not sure what they're selling for used, but if you get to where you're ready to buy something, I can get you with my camera guy. Yeah, uh, I feel like I got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> now that'd be tight, man. It's like I got rid of that Nikon I had because, for whatever reason, it's like every picture I took, it was it was kind of disheartening, you yeah. know? Because it's well, like in my head, I look at it, I and I, and I and I look up the camera itself, and the I'm one like, one thing that's good with the digital stuff is like like him talking about the six D and stuff. You know, it's like, hey, guess what? The seven's coming, mm-hmm. and eventually that six is still a great camera, but it drops. Two thousand dollars, <laughs> you know, right. like it gets way cheaper. So you can actually, instead of getting the brand new bottom of the line, you can get a two year old top of the line for the same money. Right. You know, so that's what you should try to do if you can. Mm-hmm. And even if you can go into like an Adorama or a BH B and H or Roberts and see what they have to used, because yeah. they go through all those cameras and make sure the sensors are cleaned and they can tell you how many shots it's taken. And so all this other stuff. so. Uh, 
What is the other one? DSLR? What is the difference between the DSLR? Well, the DSLR is basically it has a mirror. So what's what is, why is is mirrorless better? Well, no, mirror is just the new hot thing. It doesn't have a mirror, so it's half the size. Okay. So so it like cuts back. A lot of the on. camera yeah. companies seem like they're moving towards mirrorless direction. Yeah. Yep. Um, DSLR is just is a style of camera. Yeah. So like the mirror. Yeah. Uh, but that's what, what the, the Nikon difference, was, right? Yeah. yeah. But what well, you're looking like at you, is like a, the sensor size is going to make yeah. a big difference. And really, the people that are killing right now, Sony. Yeah, like I've, I've heard a lot now. of good stuff about that. They have so many cameras, <laughs> you know, it's like, I can't keep up, yeah. you know, with what they have, but they, you know, like from the, they have three levels of the A7, like mm-hmm. one's good at low light, one's super high res, one's super, what's for sports. Yeah, but so yeah I was looking at these Fuji films yeah. and I just, I really dig them because you were saying they're smaller. Yeah, retro they look too. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. retro and they're smaller, you yeah. know, and I, I like that, you know, because yeah. the Nikon, it always felt like and big and, and bulky. And to be honest you, can probably get a good price on a used one. Yeah, and, or so, like even if you you could probably get a new in the box XT three because the four came out, right? You know? But what I would also say is like, and correct me if you don't feel this way, but like, it's also like the lenses is where you're going to spend most yeah. of your money in the long right. run. So like a Sony's a badass camera, yeah. but then their lenses are, are fucking super retarded expensive. Because expensive. Yeah. I remember you were looking into getting yeah, they're like the their G series lenses. They're yeah. like the top like. Three four thousand dollars for lenses yeah. like that's how the much top the of motorcycle the motorcycle costs. Yeah, the top of the <laughs> that's, line. That's the one good thing with the like I was telling him with the Nikon um, digital stuff, not their mirrorless, is all the Nikon lens work on it. Yeah, so like you can find lenses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean that's yeah. so all the lenses back to like nineteen fifty or whatever they work. So on. So the that. other thing about that that camera, you know, the sharpness, I realized it. Maybe the camera had a little bit to do with it, but the majority of that was coming from the lenses yeah. was making it not sharp. So yeah. simply taking that camera, probably getting it cleaned was probably something that would have been important. Yeah. And then putting some better glass on it would have probably... Well, that's the it. thing is, that's why I like the Nikon and Canon stuff is there's so much good old glass, like F2.8 and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, that 7200 2.8 is expensive, but you can probably find the generation before that for about half the money. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, that's the used one. That's the, that's the second generation. Yeah. Is the third one out? Yep. And the second generation one has everything. The third one just has some coating on the glass. Yep. Uh, I paid twelve hundred bucks for that. And new yep. is like twenty two hundred. Mm-hmm. But so now the new Canon, the mirrorless has the RF series. Yep. Which they have a twenty eight to seventy f two. Yep. It's their professional. It's a yep. replacement for the twenty four to seventy. Yep. Which is what's on the one down there. And yep. And I want it. <laughs> it's three thousand dollars. The mirrorless is so great because, especially like you're riding bikes or you're walking on a show all day, the stuff's not heavy. Yeah, you know, it's like it's half the weight of the old stuff. That's why I like the mirrorless. Yeah, I was like my medium format's mirrorless, but it's like as tall as this water glass because it, it takes two batteries. Yeah, but it's but if you put it next to one of the other medium format cameras of the same, it's like those cameras are like this big, mm, like it's yeah. ridiculous big. Because everybody looks at it and goes, "Oh, it's not that big." Mm. It's big when you put the hundred to two hundred on it, but yeah. So the so. the new twenty four to seventy for the RF mount, the mirrorless ones, yeah. is like fat and yeah. like it's real small. So even for me, like I'm thinking about it from packing all this shit in a, in a saddle bag, you yeah. know, when I'm traveling, because I always take that lens and the twenty four to seventy yeah. when I travel. So and then, so it's a it's a camera. It's twenty four to seventy. It's a drone. It's GoPro shit and podcast stuff. Nice. <laughs> A, it's a nightmare. I was gonna show you what's good with a hundred megapixel. Okay. <laughs> Let me find it. And this is what's cool about it. If I can, I go all the way back to New York. Yeah, when I, I was in New York for the first time this year in my life, and uh, God, that place is like I would love to live there and shoot pictures all day. I was I'm sure there, it's like a, a massive. I was just north of the that. city, at a guy's house, and he's worth one point one billion dollars. Shoot his car collection. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Can you daughters? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you said the XT3, right? Yeah. Because that's uh, that gets you the last year under. Woo, damn. Are they want they still pricing? Fourteen hundred dollars. Oh, oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, it's not bad, but it's Yeah, if you're like real serious about this. Yeah. Let me think about it and I'll send him a text. But they have they just released a new I don't think it's the thirty. Yeah. They just released a new one, and it has that old vintage style and looks like a rangefinder, and it takes really good pictures, and I can't remember what the model number of it is. Somewhere. This would be a good ad break. 
Are we still rolling? Yeah. yeah. I was actually going to do that. Uh, I think next year we're going to start chopping them up. Doing some ads? Doing ads in the podcast just to kind of – but less ads overall. So instead of like at the beginning having like uh, four different companies or five different companies, it'll just be one in the beginning and two in the podcast, and that's it. Just three sponsors. This break is brought to you by – This break. Topo Candy. Chico. <laughs> Gatorade. If you're not from Texas, you don't know what Topo Chico is. <laughs> Seriously? You know what's funny is, like, you can't buy this in Phoenix. Really? Like, you can go to any grocery store around here, Walmart. And you you know. It. I mean, you can get it at, like, Whole Foods and Walmart and stuff. But, like, every, yeah, you would think like every a gas gro- station? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, they don't carry it. Yeah. I, I never like, noticed that because, like, I've gone, you know. Anywhere around here you walk. You can almost get Topo Chico at Whataburger. <laughs> you know, it's like you walk in anywhere. Anywhere, in anywhere in Dallas you can get Topo Chico in a bottle. It's like, yeah. oh, I've got, I carry three cases like, with me. Because when we make any, whiskey drinks, this is the mixer. Yeah, so yeah. I yeah. I mix that with that fucking Tennessee honey. Oh, I just got. Oh, uh, fuck. I just bought. Oh, so, did you watch my video where I shot the uh, mongoose drag car? Mm-mm. So it starts out. I'm holding a bottle of 23 year pappy, mm-hmm. and uh, the guy was giving it, letting us drink it. And it's so good. And then he gave us a half a bottle of 10 year. And so I, I'm out of it now. But what we were doing is every time we would hang out with friends, we all took shots of the Van Winkle mm-hmm. yeah. 10 year. And uh, so when we were in Phoenix. Um, well, before we got to Phoenix, we were when we were in, in uh, Mitchell. Brian gave us a single malt or single barrel Jack, and the higher end gentleman Jack, and then JC really liked the high end because there's a huge difference between yeah, there's like a hundred dollar price difference in that. Show. Well, yeah. There, yeah, but there's also a very great taste difference between Is that black it, yeah. bottle Jack and then single barrel Jack. And then while we were there, Vanessa was talking about this gold label maple. That if you can find anywhere, you got to get it. So when we were there, it was 109 bucks for the bottle. Dude, I'm so we bought a bottle of it, and it is amazing. But I've it's been, all done in maple barrels. I've been in a whiskey kick for the last couple of months, yeah. and uh, I found that Jameson is my go-to. Yeah, that's the one I like the most when I'm drinking it straight. Uh, but so I have a bottle of Blender's Dog from Jameson mm-hmm. in the Sprinter. You should try that. But that's what I use in my wife's Irish coffees that I make for, mm-hmm. and it's like really, it's so smooth. Like I. I could sip it straight. And I'm usually don't Irish whiskey. I don't sip straight. I usually mix it in something. But the Blender's Dog from Jameson is so good. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to get off the beer thing because that, yeah. uh, I just, I don't, I'm not good at drinking whiskey either. Yeah. I drink it the same way I drink beer. What's well, funny because I have this really <laughs> nice liquor collection in the Sprinter van and I barely drink. But yeah. it's all like, I make drinks for everybody else. Dude, yeah. I have a, a bottle of uh Slow and low, and a bottle of Sailor Jerry that's been just sitting in my uh, house for like six months. You know, we did the podcast with Steve. Yeah, he cracked open that big ass bottle of uh, Jack Daniel's Honey, which is like my favorite thing right now. Yes, yeah. nice. and we both took shots of it, and then he took the whole bottle with him. He did. He owes me fucking a bottle of whiskey. He <laughs> took the whole thing. Yeah, fucking nerd. <laughs> yeah. So here, I think I got that picture in here. Oh, I don't have the original. Dude, photo. you don't know how many people were mad about that, about him. Oh, Pissing here you go. In the cup? Yeah. So this is just, it's on my phone. So this is me doing a panning shot at the Speedway up in Wisconsin. Not Wisconsin, in uh, Connecticut of that McLaren Senna. Well, oh, you don't even have to zoom into it. I think just slide the next way is the same car. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a crop from that same picture. God damn. Yeah, and, that's, and you're looking at it on my phone. Like, you're not actually looking at it printed out. So that's the full-size picture, and then that's the crop into So I I could have swore that, like, I don't know. This is probably going to be stupid. It's going to make me sound stupid. Um, Go for it. When you're shooting like that and you're trying to, like, say if we're riding together, right? Yep. And I want to get a shot of you, but I want the You the want everything lights. to be in blur? All right, but you, you want, in focus. You, you want the background blurred and me in focus. Mm-hmm. All right, so if we're riding together, it's all in shutter speed. Yeah. So I usually use a 60th of a second, but okay. I handhold a 60th pretty well. Yeah. And then my new camera is image stabilized, so it's pretty good. And it also depends on light. Yeah. Like if you're trying to do it at noon, you can't really shoot 60th of a second if you don't run like a polarizer and ND filter yeah, or yeah. something. But usually a 60th of a second, and then it also speeds. Like 60th of a second, you can do 50 mile an hour and mm-hmm. still get blur, yeah. get wheel blur. And then if you're doing... If you're doing 60, you can do a hundredth of a second, you know, and it's plenty it's to get enough, the blur. Yeah. yeah. But these shots were all panned. 
So these so were. So if you're standing, these were at one hundred, and I'm just. So yeah, so I, I could. This is where I, would, I got it fucked up. Is it like? So I what thought, I do when I do that is I I go to the racetrack and I'm looking around and I'm looking where do I want this car to be when I take the picture, and I'll actually manually focus <laughs> that spot where that car is going to hit. Oh. Okay. And I'll just be. Because I'm not saying, it's, like I said, it doesn't take 50 frames a second like some of the new cameras. Yeah. Are, and, like, one of those pictures is going to be the one you want because they're all going to be in focus. So I'm like, this is where I want to be, you know. And it's and usually fast cars, it takes you a couple of these. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm getting there. Yeah. And then you start falling from here. You're in focus. Boop. In focus. Boop. But what, <clears> the, <throat> the key is you want to have your body where you want. If, if you're doing a panty shot, I mean, yeah. you probably do more bike to bike. And then that's just all shutter speed. Uh, but... I put your body where you want to take the photo because usually you start here and you end here. So you want to have your body facing this way and then come to bring your body to Back it. You're way to more stable because if you do this and go this, you start doing this, um, you know. So you want to be where your picture wants to be. So you also know that if you get to here, that's where you want to take the picture too. Yeah. So you put your body where you want to be where the picture is and then you're following that straight line mm. so it winds up again 30 years of photos natural light yeah. <laughs> you know so or 40 years or i've taken pictures of a seven but it's <laughs> you know at least 30 years of that so it's you know it, it just takes time yeah yeah but that's rolling shots are the easiest thing i do and everybody's like oh i love your rolling shots i'm like dude i do those in 15 minutes it's the easiest yeah, thing i do like all a... day because you drive a car i hang out with another car and so I, I'm about to get ready to start filming a couple things for my uh, my intros for the YouTube shit that yeah. we're gonna do. So like I, I got my buddy Brad that I'm just gonna have him ride my bike and dress like me the whole time. Nice. <laughs> and I'm gonna be over there shooting photos and getting uh you know in the back of a truck with a fucking gimbal and shit trying to get stuff going. Yeah, the hard thing with what most people mess up when on rolling shots is you just don't do a good background. You know, because background make it's like every other photo. It makes a rolling shot. Like if you do a rolling shot out there, it's gonna look amazing. Yeah, but and if you're half doing the it people like passing fucking buildings, telephone and, and poles are the worst. Like you'll see a telephone pole coming out of somebody. You know, yeah. it's like it's, and but you'll look at them. It's one of those ones where like everything's perfect in the photo if you just would have found a better location. I mean, a lot yeah. of times you're doing it riding to something. You're stuck with what you got. Yeah. But man, you could you could ride. 20 miles south of here and being nothing, mm -hmm. you know, to do rolling shots, you know? Yeah, so. that's the thing. Yeah. All right, this time for real. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hopefully I didn't say anything bad in the last 10 minutes. Just no, kidding. it was actually the most informative part, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the, 